live here at the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal. And this is Annabelle Lecter. And we're joined by Nathan Tape, director of Off Ramp, which we're going to uh, talk about here. Very cool to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me, y'all. Very excited Absolutely. to be here. Absolutely. Yeah. So since it's at festivals right now, if people aren't aware of Off Ramp, can you give them an idea of what it is? Certainly. Off Ramp is a movie about two juggalos on the way on their way to the gathering of the juggalos, and they get into a lot of trouble on the way. Uh, and uh, really, it's a story about um, found family and about kind of acceptance and sort of, uh, you know, maybe being uh, take checking your biases at the door a little bit and kind of maybe like um, questioning what you might be prejudiced about. Mm -hmm. How did you decide that the focus was going to be Juggalos? You know, the idea was kind of always Juggalos. It was like uh, I, I watched a documentary, you know, okay, a little backstory too. You know, I, I knew of ICP and Juggalos. I remember buying a, a, a Who's Going Chicken Hunt and Maxi Cassette single as like a little, as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, but but then I wasn't like super into ICP, kind of like, you know, I kind of got into indie rock and, and other things and hip hop and stuff, other, you know, more like backpacker hip hop and stuff. But but I kind of always knew about Juggalos. And then, you know, there was a big a lot of vice documentaries and things like that that kind of uh, kind of poked fun at them and whatnot. Um, and then there was one documentary called American Juggalo that I saw, uh, which if you haven't seen it, it's great. It's only like 20, 30 minutes on YouTube. And it really introduced me to the idea of the Juggalo family love and the fact that like, you know, if you're a Juggalo, your family and that there's this kind of bond uh, that they kind of have together that is more like, you know, your blood isn't necessarily your family, your chosen family is really your true family. So I thought that just that was such an interesting, beautiful kind of conundrum of these, you know, these folks that um may on the surface appear you know to be wearing clown paint or you know look not exactly like what you would expect uh you know or whatever it might be shocking the way that they look or the music that they listen to or even some of the things that they do but at the same time that their actions may be or their love for each other may be um could be as more christian than some christians you know what i mean uh and i thought that was such an interesting idea so really it all kind of stemmed from juggalos so uh when you're putting it together like uh, do you do even more research into the juggalos like do you have you ever been to a gathering or anything like that absolutely yeah we did a lot of research watched a lot of documentaries watched a lot of you know uh, uh stuff like that and then I decided to go to the gathering in 2021. Uh, sorry, let me back up a little bit too. And I'll tell you this, that like I, so I, I watched, there's another Juggalo narrative movie called Family. And it's not really about Juggalos. It's, Taylor Schilling is in it. And there's like a Juggalo character. Um, and uh, hey, what's up, Troy? How's it going? Um, I'm Nate. I just, um, You're so. muted, Troy. <laughs> Um, so I watched this movie family and, uh, in family, uh, I noticed, uh, I work in, in movies and television. I, I was a, a gaffer and, and things like that. And I noticed a UPM that I worked with named Kenneth Yu. And so I, I basically contacted Kenneth. I was like, give me your juggalo hookups. I'm trying to make this juggalo movie. And he hooked me up with this guy, Scotty D who is the, he runs fagolovers.net, which is one of the biggest like fan sites of uh of juggalos so i got to know scotty i gave him the script he gave me some notes he kind of you know helped me you know we talked a few times he kind of gave me some pointers and some my you know some kind of insight and then i went to the gathering and met with scotty and scotty was really nice enough to introduce me to his group of juggalo friends and so when that happened i really connected with a lot of the juggalos there and we then i got to know a lot of them and connected with them we had a lot of fun together and uh, jimmy soda one of the juggalos he he walked me around the gathering and introduced me to all the jugga famous people around and uh, a lot of really cool stories and a lot of the like tidbits in the film like a lot of the details of some of the things that they talk about are mm -hmm. you know real juggalo stories butthole ben is a real guy he's mm -hmm. he's actually in like the b-roll at the beginning of the movie uh and then yeah so i also i knew i was going to shoot a lot of b-roll when i was there so um that was another thing it was like to shoot all that sort of juggalo gathering b-roll um and it really it worked out great i i fell in love, you know, I really got to know these people. It really made me want to 
humanely. I really wanted to talk about them and their their lives in a much more real way, and certainly not be um, uh, mocked. Which it, when the script first started, it was kind of like it was a little bit more laughing at Juggalos, and then as I got to know them, it evolved and it became mm. more of laughing with them. And I think oh, wow. for the betterment of the film too, because I think it's yeah. so much better that that's rather than this sort of mocking perspective, you know? Yeah. Wow. It's uh, when I think about that similar to like, but probably not to the same extent, like uh, sometimes when people go to a horror festival for or convention for the first time and they think everyone's like these crazy guys <laughs> covering a tattoo and some of them are, but everyone's actually really cool and accepting of everybody. So I think that's a good story because I think most people think of the gathering. It's like really like you know nasty people and, and some terrible things going on. Yeah, no, I I think that's exactly right, and I think there is a really great comparison to horror, the horror culture and the genre culture. I mean, uh, we we've been so welcomed at all the genre festivals, and you find the genre people, the people in genre festivals, are also sweet and kind and like really, um, you know, interested in in, in what you're doing. And I, it's the same for Juggalos. I mean, I think I, that's what I mean. The film is really about like it's even more about being an outsider. And I think being an outsider is not, you know, it doesn't like who, what, what, who gets to decide what being an outsider is. We all just feel that way, you know, and if we feel like outsiders then we are, and then when we as outsiders find something in common with another group of people, we just, you know, it, it's so freeing. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a, obviously we're all movie nerds, you know, and it's like, once you get to know somebody who has, you know, watches the stuff you watch and loves the stuff you love. And then you're like, well, this is uh, so cool. You know, and it's very similar. And and a lot of Juggalos are really into movies and music, too. It's, and it's like, yeah, they like ICP, but they might like other stuff, too. Right. Uh, so, yeah. What was it like for you to be the person entering their world? Were they accepting of you? Like, how did that end up happening? Because you kind of had an in and there you are a non juggalo in this yeah. environment where they know that they've been picked on. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, a, a lot of jugglers are guarded and for rightfully so. Uh, and I think fairly so. And I think I was, uh, I was cool with that. I knew I had to kind of like, you know, um, play it kind of cool. And I think as I kept talking to and meeting these people, I think they sensed what my, where my heart was, which is that I really wanted to, do right by them and and tell a, a true you know something that was whether it's not a true or not i mean you know, there's there's some there's a lot of real things that happen in the movie that are you know based on real events as it says in the opening credits um but it was you know so so they were guarded like for instance scotty b who i had met and talked to the first day i met him you know, we kind of started talking about music and whatever, and we found some commonality about some music that, you know, wasn't ICP related, it was something like other stuff. Um, but the the first night of the gathering, I had gone to this Bigfoot hunt to meet I, meet and greet ICP, this thing you paid to like meet, do a meet and greet, because I was like, I wanted to talk to ICP and say, hey, I'm yeah. doing this movie. And uh, at that at that uh, that event this bigfoot thing they had like an exclusive cd and flag that you box you know juggalos love physical media so the next day when i meet scotty he's like oh you went to that thing he's like did you get one of the exclusive cds i was like yeah do you want it and he was like yes <laughs> <laughs> so so the next day i gave it to him and i think that was sort of like a little you know entry key i mean it, we, we were already friends or whatever but i think it gave a little bit more but Really, truthfully, I think with 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 all of the people that I met, I think it was like, you know, once you start talking to people and they realize your intent is a good one. Now, on the other hand, a lot of like juggalos would like give Jimmy sh sh Soda some shit because Jimmy was like basically taking me around the gathering and they would be like, Jimmy, what are you doing with the media, man? And like, <laughs> and like all that kind of stuff. Because again, I think there's a, and you will, when you go to the gathering, you'll see kind of all these other like media outlets that are there that are sort of like looking with this sort of outside in kind of eye. Yeah. Um, but really truthfully, I think what, you know, juggalos are excited to share their culture. Like a lot of people are, and they, and they, and if you are open to it and, and, and accepting and, um, and again, just genuine, you know, I think that's the real truth is that like, I genuinely got along with these guys, you know, we had a lot of fun. We, 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 we had a great time together and 
it was a bonding experience and it was very mm -hmm. cool. And then, you know, at the end, I really, I feel like I consider myself a juggalo now because oh, wow. uh, I was, you know, I went up on stage and got sprayed down by ICP and, <laughs> you know, I got my own juggalo name and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, what's, I, a juggalo, what's your juggalo name? So my juggalo name is, as you know, my last name is Tape. So Jimmy Soda called me VHS Tape, which I thought. I like it. I like it. That works. Uh, pretty, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. So years ago, I actually had Violent J on my pro wrestling show, and he wanted me to come out to, it was a wrestling show. It was going to happen in um, Worcester. And he wanted me to be Uncle Sl I go by Jackie Jones on the show. And he wanted me to be Uncle Slam Jackie Jones. But the show ended up getting canceled. Uh, yeah, the, the 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 wrestling is a big thing, you know. And I think it's another one of those things that, like, it's another one of those things that sort of unites a group of people, you know. Like, the, the, there's a lot of people who kind of get to ICP and being a juggalo by virtue of the risk wrestling and stuff like that. So um, that's another cool, like, um, just, you know, avenue and again I, I just think it's all like any of us who feel like outsiders that's what to me the the metaphor of you know being a juggalo is that it's 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 like any of us that feel like we just don't fit in you know so, Actually, oh, I'm thinking oh, there are some people who they're getting like kind of a vibe of what a juggalo is but might not even know what ICP is that's right we kind of jumped way in uh yeah <laughs> uh, a juggalo is a super fan of the Detroit rap group Insane Clown Posse uh, that's been around for 30 years. Uh, two, there are two main members, uh, Violent J and Shaggy Two Dope, and they started by doing wrestling, as a matter of fact, uh, and they were doing backyard wrestling. And it was, and then I, then they started a rap group which was originally called Inner City Posse, and that mm. was their first name, which was ICP. And then I think. I think that that some of the 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 wrestling sort of heels and and heroes kind of thing and of course the you know being from detroit and the kind of you know kiss sort of detroit rock city thing i think that all started to play into the sort of clown makeup and thing and i think that when they they kind of discovered and thought okay this clown thing is a cool look um and again the inner city posse icp became insane clown posse um <laughs> And yeah, so Juggalos are, and it came from like a song. They wrote like a song, and I think they said something like they were they were saying Jugglers, and then I think that people oh. started saying it as Juggalos, and then they yeah, just kind of became this kind of thing. And there's been I know they have the song called "What Is a Juggalo." Yes, and I think that came after because I think initially yeah. there was the thing, but yeah, what and what is Juggalo is a great one. So it's really cool. It is. It's fun. So uh, Troy and I have Fago. I don't know if Annabelle actually ended up finding Fago. Uh, no, I would have found it if I had time to find it. Right. Oh man, I you so want to try that. It's very very sugary. Yeah. I don't actually have any Fago here, but I have one of our custom. Uh, oh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Oh, nice. I like that. <laughs> I meant sweet as cool, but this is very <laughs> sweet to us. It's also sweet as well. Yeah. yeah. We we yep. couldn't use Fago in our uh, oh, yeah, movie. Nice. Um, I'm shocked that glass. Fago wouldn't want to be advertised anywhere they could. Interesting. Well, I didn't, so, yeah. it's in, so uh, one of the other, obviously one of the other people that I spoke to uh, was uh, Bill Dale, who's the uh, Insane Clown Posse's manager, because uh, we had to get rights to miracles and things like that. And I, I asked Bill when we talked to him, I said, hey, can I get your your Fago connections? Because I'd like to see if I can get, you know, Fago, you know, in the movie. And he said, Fago wants nothing to do with us. He said, oh, Fago wow. is wow. like, has this like basically this kind of corporate, you know, vibe and like this, like, you know, they want to be. Man, you know, I think they're really missing out. Family there. friendly. Yeah, you're not kidding. Yeah. They are missing out because the other thing is, and like, and and Bill Dale's like, we buy more Fago, like the Psychopathic Record buys more Fago than probably any other group. They travel with a forty-eight foot trailer filled with Fago. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Imagine if Fago put out like a lim like limited edition, like every year they do like ICP cans or something. Oh, like that stuff would just, people that. would yeah. uh, buy that up. I'd probably even buy one. Yeah. It would be it would be huge, and that's exactly yeah. what Bill said that they proposed was a basically a, a collab, and yeah. Fago just wanted nothing to do with it. And it's like wow. Uh, another 
funny like random story is like after the movie uh scott who plays uh, silas in the film uh <laughs> yes i should, he should <laughs> Pego. i think i think Pego is probably worth more than you than, than, uh, than you think but um uh we found out that scott turner schofield who who uh, plays silas in the movie his wife's family is related to the fagasons who started fago oh no way interesting crazy crazy <laughs> kind of are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah all right so uh, this is my my, my taste my first fago in many years Troy, you ready? this is my first ever all right, let's all right, all right. it is very sweet it's good though i'll be i'll be honest it's good it doesn't it taste well, as I, sweet as I thought it would be because it is this one can is 70% of your sugar, <laughs> daily sugar <laughs> intake. <laughs> it tastes like cotton candy. It's I, like it's candy. More syrupy. It's, yeah, I really no, like it, actually. Yeah, it's actually, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, the Fago people, that's good. Uh, no, Coast, it is uh, cotton candy. Coast is actually, is, is that green apple Fago? No, but that oh. does sound good. No, this yeah. is a this is a juggo. This is candy. This is a this is a fake one that we had to make. We, oh. we used we used um, there's a local New Orleans drink called a Big Shot, which is what's underneath here. Oh, okay, basically okay. like oh, a little okay. Fago, but uh, we made it after the candy apple, which is I think there is. You're right. There is a green apple Fago flavor. Um, another funny tidbit about Fago and ICP is that. Uh, they the first time they or the first few shows that they did they used the full sugar regular fago for because mm -hmm. you know and if you don't know sorry i'm assuming but icp sprays fago on the audience it's a big yeah. part of their live show like they just come out and they're just constantly spraying fago and uh at first they did it with full sugar fago and it got you mentioned the venues were not really hot on that. <laughs> no, it destroyed all the equipment because all of the oh. shit the speaker. <laughs> so now they use exclusively use diet root beer uh Fago uh, <laughs> because the diet and, and the and the root beer smells good. So it's actually it's kind of yeah, like yeah. it's it's, it's kind of pleasant. You're like, oh, this smells good. And <laughs> and apparently it smelled terrible with all the original because it would use all the full flavor, it's just like a mixture of like <laughs> Cola and red. Anyway, it's just pretty. <laughs> Co said he's going to bring his pitcher along and catch some and uh, <laughs> fill that up. But actually, that's the kind that Jill Six recommended to us was to get root beer Fago. That was her. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Jill was great. We ran it. We had uh, we hung out with her at Panic Fest uh, two weekends ago in Kansas City. We had a great time in in uh, Kansas City. Awesome festival. Uh, recommended if you ever can can go. Yeah, look. I've heard good things. It yeah. keeps stacking, so I feel like Kansas City has to be a future destination. Yeah, they, yeah, they should have good barbecue too. They oh, do yeah. have good. They do have good barbecue. I went to we went to Slaps and and I went to and it was really good, uh, very very good. Also, I mean, very cool. They have a very similar kind of vibe to like Boston Underground, which is where uh, I met Neil. Mm -hmm. uh, is that uh you know because it's a one really cool theater and it's basically all centered around that theater um which is a lot like the brattle um i mean different theaters different kind but the same kind of thing which yeah. i really like for Bethlehem, the single theater where everything happens yeah uh, it, it's kind of a bummer when you have to kind of go around town to multiple different theaters and if you yeah. have to make choices which movie you're gonna yeah. see it, so. yeah. i actually say the same exact thing all the time we talk about festivals because there's something i also uh something that's over several days you're you're all watching it together it's like community feel and mm -hmm. i've been to quote unquote bigger festivals um that are like multiple screens multiple theaters sometimes and that's cool in a different way but it's a totally different feel because you're not all watching the same stuff together mm -hmm. it's kind of like you're all at the movies but you're not really all together yeah. you know watching the same stuff yeah and it's and if you go a few times like it's cool to see even if you go once you probably could feel like there's some people that that have come here before and they're all like happy that uh, like jill has been there and now she's got a new movie out and you can feel that like community vibe yeah 100 percent. i mean I, that's one thing i love so much about both boston underground and and panic fest they were both really great and i mean i love all the festivals that i've been to but they're they all have different kind of vibes and i think mm -hmm. but the, but there, those two were very. Um, it was a very much a community, and you were like going the same kind of thing, you know, going to the same ones, and and even we also we world premiered at Splat Film Festival in in Warsaw, Poland. And, oh wow! 
yeah, it was cool. Um, and uh, it was a, it was also kind of a, a similar sort of experience. It was in one really cool movie theater. There were multiple screens, so it was a little different, you know. Yeah. Um, Panic Fest had two screens as well, so you still kind of like, you know. But I, that I think that's you know that's good for the festivals. Yeah, because so, sometimes it's just too many movies. Um, Oh, yeah. Another one I like is South Texas Underground Film Festival. And it's all one theater, but it is multiple screens, but still has that community feel to it. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Warsaw was great. It was a really interesting experience. I was very curious how our film would translate both literally and figuratively to a Polish mm -hmm. audience. Yeah. And uh, they loved it. I mean, they voted us. Oh, the good. Best, they, be, they voted us best film in the festival. So, oh, wow. Awesome. So yeah. It. It's fantastic. Was, was that something that you thought about or other people involved in the movie? Like not only other countries, but people who aren't aware of Juggalos or aren't Juggalos who, who maybe don't don't look fondly <clears throat> at Juggalos. Like, are they going to even want to watch the movie? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I you know, I, one of my favorite things that I hear when people watch the film is that they say it's not what they expected. And a lot of people, you know, come at it with this sort of idea of like, okay juggalos and kind of roll their eyes a little bit and then i think afterwards most of those people who have that kind of reaction are like oh wow maybe i was being you know prejudiced mm -hmm. against juggalos in a way when even people who are very not prejudiced they just might have this thought and and truth be told i even had that feeling like i said i and i think that's why i'm so happy with how the film works because i think even you know i even had that kind of sense of sort of even having a little bit of prejudgment, you know, right. about these people. And as I learn more, I think it's just like revealing. And I think that's such a human thing that, you know, we may think about these things and, and kind of have these thoughts. And then suddenly, you know, as we get to know people, you're like, oh, humans are humans. So, yeah. um, so I, I, as far as like playing at Warsaw, I mean, we wanted to play, we definitely submitted to a number of, of international festivals. And I think, a lot of the international festivals, you know, weren't as hot on it because they were like, you know, it seems like an American phenomenon. Uh, but but Splat loved it. And uh, Monica at Splat, who's awesome, she she really loved it and she wanted it there. And uh, so it worked out. And we had it's funny enough, I, the same Scotty D, who I keep mentioning, I, I sent him a, a message right when we got in. I was like, Scotty, do you know any Polish juggalos? And he goes, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> so there were two, these two Amazing. guys, Jacek and Tarek, who are both Polish juggalos who had gone to the gathering years ago and got to be friends with him. And uh, they came into the, the film and they were they, they came into Warsaw because they lived outside of Warsaw. Um, but they came in and they, they it was interesting, too, because afterwards, I, I was, you know, it's funny because I'm like, I get more nervous. Like I want I get more nervous about Juggalos liking the movie than I think about norm mm. normies. Yeah, yeah. Because I, you know, I feel like it's like if I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to misrepresent or, or treat them, you know, I want it to be, you know, I want, you know what I mean? So afterwards I was like, did you, how'd you guys like the film? And they were like, you know, look, we were skeptical at first. We weren't sure. We were, weren't sure if you're going to be making fun of us or what, but in the end it was really sweet and it's really touching. And, you know, it was all. And so I, I felt very proud that that was yeah. how reacted. Uh, let's see. I used to come home from those shows thinking horribly from all the Fago. <laughs> I caught a bottle at Sabu, if people know as a wrestler, <laughs> threw into the crowd that he popped with a spike during the Riddle box tour. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I guess you would be very sticky if it's the full sugar. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of people just saying whoop whoop. Oh, uh, I do want to show these because our uh, friend of the show, Pepe Petit, had, was in a motorcycle accident and had surgery, but he had made me these. Uh... Oh wow, <laughs> those are awesome! Yeah, wow. Not just for this show; they were for yeah. a while ago. <laughs> so uh, get well, Pepe Petit. Yeah, get well. Nice, nice hatchets there. Yeah, that's you yeah. know in our home we have the the hatchet wagon, which we uh, dubbed. You know. <laughs> so at Buff, you won um, for how? What was how was it worded? It was like best uh, first uh, feature film, best debut feature. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh nice. Um, yeah, very excited. I was really, really pleased. Um, it was great. It really went over really well in, at, at Buff and the audience loved it and so much great. I, I was so, uh, I feel so lucky because there's so many great people and so much press that I met there, including y'all. And, um, I just think that's such a, I really think Buff is a real hidden gem of a festival. It was really, really great. And, and, um, 
you know, everyone was so awesome, Nicole and Evram and Kevin and everybody so cool and and welcoming and 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 then but like I said, it was really uh, and I think too, I mean, we were really lucky. I felt really you know lucky where we were placed, you know, it was really a bunch of really great films that we were you know mm -hmm. playing next to. And uh, yeah, I felt really honored and and especially to win, you know, what a, an awesome award. Uh, and yeah. Oh, yeah. it's such a cool award too. It's the 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 uh, the snow globe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was that you had to be careful bringing that home, I suppose. So. <laughs> yes. So bringing it home was actually sort of a an issue because I, I did I did actually have a suitcase like I checked the bag and at first I was like oh I'll just I'll check it you know in the bag and because you know because of the liquid thing but then I was like kind of nervous I was like I mean even though it's in the box it's, it was such a like a night I was like God did they just really toss this thing around mm -hmm. are they gonna break yeah. it yeah so, you can see them like throwing suitcases on top of each other yeah. yeah. So I was like, well, maybe I'll just try to carry it on. And then of course I went through security and they're like, you can't take care of this one. I'm like, but it's a sealed snow globe. And they're like, yeah, but it's liquid. You can't take it. So I was like, okay. Oh. So I was like, but this is really important. I was like, this is a festival. It was an award from a festival. I, I, I really I need to take this home. And uh, so they, thankfully the people at the Boston airport gave, they had a box and gave it to me and were able to check it. And so oh, okay. thankfully, That's happy, to, happy to report that it made it home safe. Wow, Logan was kind. That I makes know, me that's, feel good. Right? <laughs> Listen, uh, I, found, I found all the people in Boston to be kind. I mean, you know, maybe some of them are loud, but that's okay. <laughs> No, um, had you done festivals before? I know it's your first feature film, but like, had you gone to them? I don't know if you've made shorts before or if you just went them went to them to see stuff. I have both gone to some. Well, you know, we have New Orleans Film Festival, which has been going for quite a long time. We had our U.S. premiere there for Off Ramp, um, and so I've I've gone to a number of screenings. I, I never really like um, attended for you know like for the whole of the festival. I did make a short in 2020 that uh, that one that was pretty good. It's called Mariah. You can check it out on my Vimeo page. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, I'll check it, out. Um, it uh, it's only like 14 minutes, so it's shorter than off ramp. Uh, uh, but it did pretty well, and it won a couple of awards. But it was COVID, so mm -hmm. it was like in 2020. So I could only I went to I was only able to go to two screenings I think one was in like Lafayette and one was in Natchitoches they were both in Louisiana um but I could only go to two and I guess I had always like felt like okay when I have a film to play in festivals then I'm gonna go and like I don't know it just I, there was always like I always wanted to make films and so I always felt like when I went to film festivals I felt like envious or like I wasn't you know so I I kind of waited um, so it's been a really great experience. I've been soaking it up and, and going to all the festivals that I, you know, we played at. Um, I've gone and I'm, I'm just loving it. I mean, it's such an awesome experience. Um, and we'll be going uh, this weekend. I leave, term, I leave Saturday morning to go to Calgary to go to the Calgary Underground oh, awesome. Festival. Oh, nice. Yeah. For, so really for someone out there who um you know either want to make a short or film or maybe they haven't made anything yet, what what would you say the benefits have been so far for you going to the festivals? Well, first I'd say if you want to do it, you should do it. I mean, there's nothing stopping you really. Everything is accessible. Just go for it and make it. I mean, it's just, you know, it's something that I wanted to do for such a long time. And I just kept putting it off and life just kept getting in the way. And, and, you know, there's no greater joy in my opinion than making films uh, for me. Um, and uh, it was just I, it, in both making my short and then making the feature, it's been, you know, yeah, there's a lot of trials and tribulations and there's a lot of hard stuff that happens and it's uh, <laughs> it's not easy ever. Um, but when it all works together, it's just such a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the other thing is, is that festivals are really valuable in that, like you not only making the connections, uh, because just knowing the people is such a big deal about going back to festivals. Um, you know, I feel like um, now, you know, I'm sort of part of a family in a way of, of, of people who've been to these festivals. And so 
um, you know, like Nicole at Buff and Evram, like I feel like I can reach out to them and, you know, with films and things and whatever, uh, you know, same with Adam and Tim at Panic and, you know, Jeff at Sherman Oaks and Monica at Splat and Clint at New Orleans. I mean, you know what I'm saying? These people that you meet uh, and you, and you, you know, that you unite over this thing. Um, and then also too, like I said, all the, all the press too, which is, you know, invaluable for an independent film. Uh, and it's so wonderful that, you know, people like yourselves, you know, do this stuff because for us, it's so valuable to do. And we're excited to be able to connect with another audience. And, you know, if there's people out there listening that are going to say, Hey, you know what? I saw that. And now I'm going to go see the movie when it comes out. That's, that's so awesome and so valuable. Um, so I, I'd say, do it, go for it. The other thing I would say, what, what I would say is be strategic. You know, it's hard. Um, it's expensive. Um, so, you know, try to be strategic about what you do um, and try to, it's hard. It's really hard to find the right festivals. And I think that's one of the biggest mm -hmm. things that people kept telling me. And I didn't believe it whenever, you know, some of the, we weren't getting yeses from some other festivals and they were like, oh, you got to find the right ones. And it's like, okay, well, how, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but then when you do, which is, I think you just keep trying. And when you do find the right ones, then you have, you do connect so much with the audience and, and, um, you know, I the, there's nothing like the joy of watching your own, your film affect an audience. And for me, watching off ramp with an audience is just the greatest thing because I mean, one, it's really fun because it's a funny movie and it's great to hear people laugh and that there's also some really big shocks and there's some really big like, you know, pin drop moments in the movie and and getting them to the experience, getting that to experience that with them is just it's just, you know, it's the, it's such a great joy. Um, and I think the other thing, too, is when I was in uh, film school, uh, we were lucky enough to have William Friedkin came and talk to our class. Oh, awesome. And uh, yeah, incredible. He had so many awesome things he said. One of the great things he said was he was like, you make the movie three times. You make one movie when you shoot it, you make a different, no, yours, you make one movie when you write it, you make a different movie when you shoot it, you make a different movie when you edit it. But I actually believe there are two more steps to that. I think that there's a first one, which is you make a, a one movie when you conceive it. And then when you write it, it becomes something else. Then when you shoot it, it becomes something else. Then when you edit it, it becomes something else. But the truth is you really don't know what you've made until you show it to people because they tell you what you've made because you're so like myopic. I mean, you're just like in this tunnel of, of making your film. And when you see it with an audience and they, you know, they tell you what you've done. <clears throat> You've been in the industry for a while. You went to film school. So what is it that you did not end up making a feature sooner? It's probably fear. It's fear yeah. of rejection. Um, you know, I uh, made like a student film and I really expected it to set the world on fire and it didn't. Um, it was good, uh, but it was a student film. And, uh, you know, the rejection that I experienced from festivals and things at that time was I took really hard. Um, I think mm -hmm. we all do. Um, but I think it was really, really tough for me to do it. Um, so I guess I, for a long time, I was just kind of like protecting myself. I, I wasn't sure. I was like, can I ever do this? Can I ever like accept the the pain of, of this? Because, you know, if you make films, it really is your child. It really is your life for such a long time. And it's, you live, breathe, it, you know, whatever. And so the rejection was really hard. There was that. And then when I went to film school, you know, I ended up uh, in the lighting department of, um, uh, I also, by the way, sorry, I, was, I also was really, really into cinematography and, and I love shooting as well. And so like, I kind of thought my, that that was the path. I kind of thought that maybe I was going to be a cinematographer. Maybe I was more destined to do that than to be a, a director because maybe I'm too thin skinned for being a director. And, um, and so it was kind of like, it was like more pursuing that. So then I, I basically got a job. Uh, I came back, I was, I was in LA, went to film school in LA and I was from new Orleans and I came back home to new Orleans for like a high school reunion. And one of my friends, there was a, a big boom in the movie industry in New Orleans at the time. And a friend invited me to come work on one of the movies in the lighting department. And I did. And I was 
you know, very, I went right away. I was successful. I was like the cinematography TA. So I like, I knew a bunch of stuff. Like I knew what they were doing. Um, and, uh, so I ascended really quickly, uh, became, you know, got into being, a, um, uh, a gaffer pretty quickly, uh, which is the chief lighting technician, the head of the electric department. Uh, so it was also too, that like, you know, it's a good job. Um, and you know, it becomes its own hustle, um, you know, trying to get the next job and trying to kind of, you know, and you're trying to always kind of raise your profile as a, uh, as a gaffer or as a DP. So at the same time that I was like, I was, I was working in the electric department and I would also shoot, you know, uh, things here and there, I'd shoot music videos. I was a, uh, you know, DP on a few like, uh, um, uh, low, low budget features. Um, some were really good and like proud of the work, but it just, you know, it was, it's hard to commit all that time. And then you have all this other time. Plus when you work on set, I mean, there was a, there was a job I did as a gaffer a TV show that we, we averaged, you know, 70 to 90 hour work weeks. I mean, you're, you're talking wow. about, like, you know, we have no time to do anything, Yeah. but then you have like months off between jobs sometimes. And so that's when you kind of do some other stuff. So really it was like, I was a very, I became a successful gaffer, uh, and, and I would shoot here and there little things, but was pretty, you know, pretty successful. Um, but then during the pandemic, uh, you know, I think we all had time to sit around and think, and I spent a lot of time sitting around and thinking about what I really wanted to do. And while I realized that while being a gaffer is a really good job and I was very blessed to be doing so and have success, it wasn't fulfilling my soul. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't giving me that creative, you know, it wasn't fulfilling my creative desire. Yeah. So, uh, and I had made my short film like right before the pandemic, because I was starting to get that itch and I was like, I need to make something. I think I need to do this. I think, you know, like I'm getting, you know, I'm in my forties. I'm like, I'm never going to get any younger. Like we got to just try. And uh, so I made the short film and it kind of proved that I, I felt like I could do it. Like I was like, okay, this is pretty good. And, um, I wanted to do better, but I was like, this is pretty good. So uh, then during the pandemic, it was like, you know what? I'm never going to be a filmmaker if I keep being a gaffer. Like, I'm not going to, you know. So I had to basically, I decided to kind of retire from that position and, and, um, and you know, kind of pass the torch to some of the guys who were working for me at the time and, uh, and, and also help them out too. I mean, it's also a cool thing to be able to kind of pass that along as well. Um, but then I just was like, I need to make a film. And, and it was really the pandemic that really told me to do that. And Tim and I, my co-writer, we had written a, a draft of off ramp a long time before it's been like 10 years, I think, since, or nine years since we first wrote the first draft. And, um, and so it always been kind of sitting around. And again, I kept taking jobs and not making the film and taking a job. You know, it's like suddenly an offer would come up and you're like, well, am I really going to turn down this much money? You know what I mean? Um, right. mm -hmm. So but I think, you know, it takes you kind of have to, you know, and, and, you know, you have to make a decision, you know, and you have to kind of do that. Yeah. And so pandemic taught me that. Sorry if I'm rambling. No, no. not at all. It was not very not interesting. All. Yep. Yeah. Sounds like. Uh a lot of struggle internally but I, you did what most people would do i think you have you have to survive you have to live you have to think about you know what's next and you were doing that yeah and it's a good you know like i said it's a good gig too so i mean I, you know look i'd still rather be a gaffer on movies and television than you know do a number of other things it's still a great job um and we're still very lucky to be able to you know, work with all these cool people. And, mm -hmm. and, and it really, I think too, it also continued my education to a great degree. I mean, you know, I, I had, you know, 15 years of experience on movie sets, you know, yeah. so when it was time to make off ramp. Not only was I able to make, you know, pull in a lot of favors from people I had worked with, call actors that I had worked with, mm -hmm. um, but also, uh, you know, I was a much better problem solver uh, because really truthfully being a filmmaker is being a problem solver mm -hmm. um, and being a good contributor on set is being a, a problem solver. And so I, I had learned a lot and I'd seen a lot of how things were done that were successful and unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. And I tried to learn and do as much of those as I could, although there were still a lot of bumps and bruises and things like that that happened, but you know. Uh, it's in the end, I think it all, you know, the, the, there's a phrase in the film that they, that I learned from the jugglers, the carnival provides uh, is the phrase. 
And uh, they say that at the gathering and it's, you know, it, it, I think it's kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's ended up being something that becomes a mantra in the movie. And I think it's something to kind of continually remember is that, you know, if you are open to it, if you remain open to it and you're positive and you put positive things out there, the dark carnival, exactly. Then the car the dark carnival will provide, you know? Mm. So um, did you do your own editing? You talked about, you know, the movie also becomes its own movie during the editing process. Uh, I co-edited it with a friend of mine, with a guy, uh, Brandon Cotifla, who uh, he is, uh, you know, we, I, I knew like Cotifla, sorry, I mispronounced it. Um, I, uh, I wanted the experience of working with an editor, but I always edit my own stuff. So it was kind of a new thing. And, um, and so Brandon took and like, we, it became a really collaborative process that we ended up doing a lot of the, you know, stuff together. Um, but not really, it was weird together, but separate because we were always in two different places. Like I would edit on my computer and he would edit on his, but we would like kind of pass it back and forth. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, it's just, it's very hard for me to not edit a little bit because I just need to like. I just need to touch it a bit, you know, it's just, it's too, um, but, you know, but at the same time, Brandon contributed a lot of great stuff to it. So it really was very much a, um, a collaborative effort because it wasn't just, um, it really wasn't just, you know, one or the other. We did a little bit of both. Um, so, yeah. Uh, how about casting the movie, you know, finding the, the right two guys to play the leads? And do they have any backstory with Juggalos or ICP at all? Yes. Yeah, so casting was it was is pretty interesting. We had uh, a great casting director here in New Orleans named Hunter McHugh. Uh, and he, you know, cast a lot of the 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 the, uh, uh, the parts for us, found us a lot of the great parts. But uh, for John and Scott, um, uh, Trey and Silas. We actually cast two separate people before sure. earlier on and it didn't work out. And so then we were looking again and John who plays Trey, uh, John Oswald, Tim, my co-writer, he also co-wrote another movie and produced another movie called low life. Uh, that was pretty, pretty great. It played at, someone uh, actually just told me to, to check that yeah. out. If, it's like you it's on Tubi. Yeah. if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's really great. Mm -hmm um and uh it premiered at like fantasia and played at panic and it was great you know so johnny who plays trey who plays a character in low life in fact he plays a character of a a white guy who gets out of prison with a swastika tattooed over his face mm. <laughs> um that's rough which, which is surprisingly a funny part it's it's yeah. does it just to like to stay alive and survive in the movie anyway mm. john is great in it and uh, so when we kind of rethought our casting of, of the, the two leads, you know, Tim had kind of always been like kind of gently pushing John, uh, just being like, you're going to love him. He's great, whatever. I met Johnny. He's, he's great. Um, uh, and he, and he, he was. And it was awesome. Uh, he, John, he doesn't, he didn't, he, like, he, he wasn't like his history with Juggalos was pretty minor, but he used to be like, he was like a heavy metal drummer and stuff. So, you know, I mean, I think he, you know, it's like one of those things that, again, it's like, it's not that far off, you know, um, again, into metal, into tattoos, whatever, you know, he's like, he kind of, there's, they're pretty similar uh, in that way. Um, but John just, is, he really just connected with the character in the script uh, and really just dove right into it. Uh, Scott, who plays Silas, um, you know, we t basically did more of a national search for for that and Hunter, Hunter got, got Scott uh, and you know, Scott's, I remember Scott tells me he got this, his agent, like, sent him the script and was like, this is a really weird script, but maybe you want to read it. <laughs> Scott was like, I love this. And Scott is the furthest thing from a juggalo uh, in his personal life. He's a very, uh, you know, but he embodied that character. I mean, mm -hmm. Scott's never, Scott never rapped before. And like, he does all these awesome raps in the movie and like learn. And like, as soon as he was cast too, there's, you'll see like at the beginning, he messes with like a ballast song, a butterfly knife. And like, as soon as he was cast, I like ordered an, a, you know, a practice a ballast song and like sent it to him. Um, but, you know, Scott just really, again, just identified with the script. And he, when he sent in his tape, you know, he did one of those things that he always tells me is like a, a, um, a, a an actor's trick. 
But as he does a tape, he's like, I'm Scott Turner Schofield and I am Silas. But it worked on me. <laughs> um, so so they both but they both really embraced the Juggalos and the Juggalo culture. And they did a lot of research about it. And one of the most amazing things is if you see, if you, you know, if, if you see is that they have this undeniable chemistry. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's one of those tricky things when you take two strangers and are like, here, be best friends. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you have to be best friends with this like lifelong history. Of, like, you know, <laughs> right. And because you see in movies with like even two great actors, and you can sometimes tell the chemistry is not there and the movie doesn't work. Amen. Um, you know, I was talking about it the other day, the thing about the score, you know, that Frank Oz movie. Yeah. I mean, like three of the greatest actors ever. It's like De Niro, Brando, Ed Norton. And it's like, and they're all great actors, but not together yeah. in that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it was because we were talking about Frank Oz because of Pitt, and I was like, "Yeah, directed by Miss Piggy." Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, the one of the funny ones is that Ashley Smith, who plays Eden, she has a history with Juggalos. Oh. Um, she her sister was a Juggalo. And she had gone to a number of like kind of they used to have local gatherings. They used to have kind of regional gatherings. Um, and she had been to a number of them. And her 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 older sister was like a huge juggalo. And mm -hmm. so she had this like real history with it. And she came she she's just, like normally was like a, is like a model and stuff like that. And um, a friend of mine said, I know this girl from acting class who's like in L.A. He's, he was in L.A. And he's like and she was a juggalo and she'd be perfect. And he was right. She as soon as she read for it, I was just like, "You are Eden." I was like, "There's, you know." So there was she's no, right in the movie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, she really is. Um, she just got she's some movie she's in that is going to premiere at Tribeca. So oh wow, awesome. good for her. Yeah. Um, so yeah. What? Well, um, also, when you were talking about like finding the right uh, film festival, part of the reason I like festival movies is a lot of them don't really fit into one genre. So, you know, Boston Underground is kind of a bigger umbrella because it's an underground, underground, but a lot of them are specific to horror. So with Off Ramp, like I I know people will argue a lot about genre, but, you know, is it technically a horror movie? Maybe not. So, like, how did you go about finding ones that, like, I think, you know, will get in here? It's a good question. It was tough uh, because Off Ramp really is kind of a genreless movie in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's was our intent I, and those are some of my favorite movies my favorite movies aren't easy to categorize you know um i i think that you know one of the biggest inspirations for us uh and uh, is one of my favorite movies uh, in fact my dog is named after the main character and it is wild at heart david lynch's film uh. and uh you know it's like wild at heart is like funny romantic scary weird violent like you know, emotional. Uh, I mean, you know, I, to me, I get chills every time I, you know, the car, the car crash scene in the middle of that movie, every single time it makes me feel so unique, uh, such a unique sadness in that thing. Um, but it's also really beautiful, like this love between these like characters. Uh, so we, we, you know, always kind of wanted to do something that was a little bit hard to define. And I, and I, you know, it's one of those things that like, it was kind of, it became, it's a challenge because, you know, there, you know, a lot of, you know, we always felt like this film would fit with genre audiences. Um, but it was like, but a lot of genre fests, I think were a little like uneasy about programming it because it isn't yeah. as easy, you know, it isn't really horror. It's like mm -hmm. horror adjacent. Um, there's some horrific things and there's definitely a lot of blood, you know, at a time, but like, it, it, it's it's like it's a comedy but it's also a drama but it's also like an adventure like it's all these things and in the end like i feel really proud of that um but it makes it a little bit of a challenge to find the right home for it mm -hmm. um and uh but in the end i think you know you just keep trying and again i think the places we played the crowds have loved it um and it go it gets like i said the genre f fans um I think just because again they're so sweet and i think one thing too is that you know genre fans you don't you wouldn't know it by looking at them and you may not want to think it but they're really they're kind of all softies you know what i mean and and, yeah. and like in a good way right yeah and, and that's the thing is off ramp really is like it's a sweet movie you know in the end it's like it's about even though it's really gory and very 
through a lot of curse words and a lot of I, I really realized how many times how many times <laughs> we're in the movie whenever we I watched it in Poland because when I watched it in Poland it's subtitled in Polish and they had taught me they had taught me the Polish word for fuck was kur, kurva and they had taught me this word like that day. And so as I'm watching it, I'm like, man, there's a lot of quarter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, it's also funny, too, because like we also played at like New Orleans Film Festival, which, again, really blessed to do so because it was, you know, a, a, the hometown festival. Um, and, you know, and, and New Orleans is, Film Festival is definitely not a genre festival, right? It's much more of a, I would guess I would call it like an art festival. I mean, even though there's some crossover, obviously, and a lot yeah. of art films play at these other genre festivals. Um, but it's, it's a little bit more like that. Um, and it was really funny because when we, when we got in, they basically, they asked, they said, uh, does your film have any trigger warnings that you, you know, to warn the audience? And there were 15 options and off ramp clicked off 13 out of the 15. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Next time we'll get all. Moment of try. I know. Yeah. Next time we'll get all fifteen. Like, yeah, I was just gonna say. You, go, right? Yeah. Now that you know them, you can like keep in mind. We have to put what the all not, What did you not? <laughs> I, I can't. I can't remember exactly. But it was dark. <laughs> it's be real uh, bad. Yeah. yeah, but the but it was funny because you know when we screened at New Orleans because again the audience is a little different, right? You know, but you know we you know we screened it and like. There was, for instance, you know, there's one woman who I met who was a member of the board and, you know, she's a, you know, middle-aged white woman who's wealthy and whatever and very kind and nice. Um, but she, you know, I, I told her I wanted her to see my film before the film. And then she was like, she told me after the film, she was like, I saw the trigger warnings and I saw the picture and I just wasn't so sure about this movie and I wasn't sure what to expect. But then she was like, but afterwards it was my favorite movie of the festival. Oh, and, cool. And so she really connected with it because I think that's the truth is again, the really like, it's really still universal things we're talking about here, you know, like love acceptance, um, finding your place, finding your tribe, you know, this is, this is the kind of stuff that, that we were kind of talking about. Um, and, and I think it, I, I wanted it to be universal and I, I hope it is. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, you, were you about to say something? Sorry. I want to talk over you. No, um, ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you said about, you know, finding a home when you talk about the festivals and not to get ahead of yourself, but um, do you know where it would, where it's going to go off ramp is going to go after the festivals? Because, you know, there's lots of um, uh, websites or streaming sites and, uh, you know, and some of them are very specific to horror or whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we we are in talks with the distribution company right now, and we have a basically we have a, a deal in place. Uh, so at first it will be uh, on um, premium VOD sites, so it'll be like Amazon and and uh, iTunes or Apple, whatever they call it now, and Roku and whatever the whatever the first ones are. And that's like the first wave. And then after that, it's sort of a, I think it's up to the distributor to sort of find the place for it to, to live. It may end up on Tubi. Tubi is a very, a, a one that's really good for a lot of independent filmmakers. Um, so we'll see. Uh, at the same time, uh, we retained our own theatrical rights. So we are going to do our own sort of small theater uh, run. I love that. That's starting yeah. to happen more often. I see people doing that. Some people we have on the show and they'll travel around to, you know, art, uh, not necessarily art house theaters, but you know, like independent like theater. Yeah. 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 Yep. Well, I, I think Perfect. that's that's one of the things that I, I mean, too. It was like to to me, I thought, well, if we if I give up the theatrical rights and we suddenly don't have an opportunity to go to screen it at around a juggalo event, because like that's yeah. kind of some that of the would be pretty, that yeah. I want to do with it. Oh like, yeah. Um, and, and because, you know, we, we want, you know, it's, it's, it's a, I think the clear thing is, I think clearly off ramp is a midnight movie, right? It's clearly a cult type movie. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of, you know, so uh, anyway, so I'm excited about that. Also thank the, the, the distributor does have a physical media thing going. So there will okay. be some sort of phys physical media. I don't know that all the details of it yet, but uh, but we're very excited to just have it, you know, because it's it's such a 
uh, kind of a rarer thing these days. Um, and um, we really, you know, I mean, I have a massive collection of, of DVDs and Blu-rays myself, so I really want one of my own. Yeah. Oh, Do you yeah. have like specials like planned, uh, commentary track? I don't know. Maybe that's too ahead of yourself, but. I mean, I would love all that. Uh, I, that's my dream. Um, yeah. I'm a big to, fan of commentary tracks. Yeah. I think we have, you know, it's like we have to kind of like, um, it has to sort of run its course in a certain way. Um, like meaning that you have to kind of like let, I think, I don't know, I'm still experienced, you know, it's still new to all of, to me, but yes, I, ideally, I mean, I would love to have a special release with commentary yeah. behind the scenes and interviews. That would be, that's my dream. I, I mean, again, I have so many of them myself. Um, but I'll just kind of see what we'll have to see what happens, I think, you know, it, it, and, um, may, you know, but uh, I really wanted to have all that stuff because I know and I know the Juggalos would really love that because they love yeah. physical media. And um, and there's a lot of stuff I filmed at the gathering that didn't make it into the movie. And I'm sure they'd love to see all that. Well, the first time I actually saw ICP, it's uh, it's wrestling related, but it's before they started their own wrestling promotion and they put out a. Um, so they took some death matches from Japan in the 90s and they did commentary over them, which was very funny. And they just made up names for all the wrestlers. So mm -hmm. if they're interested, they could like uh, do a commentary track over your movie. <laughs> oh, that would <laughs> be kind a of riot. Like, kind of a riff over, over off ramp. Yeah. Have they be been able to see the movie yet? Uh, no, I, they have not. Um, the basically. We so we licensed um, <laughs> that we uh, we um, we we licensed miracles for the movie, mm -hmm. uh, and also licensed the use of of the Hatchet Man and other like their logos and stuff. So they are aware of the film, um, but I, I I I guess I hesitate to just like send it to them because I just don't know if they'll just if they'll watch it necessarily like I, I i guess i feel like the film needs to kind of have a little bit of like once it kind of gets out there then yeah. I, I think they'll sort of see it um there's a, a lot of juggalos uh in, in icp one of the one of their great the things that they're great about is like supporting the, the the sort of diy nature of a lot of juggalo stuff yeah and they they really like in, encourage juggalos to like make their own art and do their own stuff and they you know, a lot of them sell their art at the gathering and it's a very you know it's a very cool thing that they're 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 really into so i think at the same time i think they probably hear a lot of people say to them we're gonna do this thing yeah. um, and and i think that you know it's kind of like once the film is sort of legitimized in their eyes i think it'll it'll get to them and I truly hope they enjoy it. I mean, we we I definitely want them to. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I I want them to enjoy enjoy it, and 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 I and I hope that they like most of the jugglers who have seen it. You know, recognize that what I want to do and what I'm trying to do with this film is to humanize them and to you know give them a voice um, and to make them feel seen. You know, because it's really what I. I think everyone who feels like an outcast deserves to find their tribe, you know? And I'm not just saying this because you're here, but I'm part of a, a group chat who uh, it's a bunch of festival people. I know most of them are indie filmmakers and they usually talk about very like obscure stuff or very art artsy stuff, but they're all very excited to see off ramp, which made me happy. Good. Good. Yeah. I, I, I'm excited for you to see it too. Um, I think it's uh like I said, uh, you'll, I think hopefully you'll be pleasantly surprised. Hmm. And I just want to ask, how did Miles Doliak get involved? Multiple time guest here on the show. Uh, I'm friends with Miles. And when he popped up on, on the screen, I was like, oh, I think that's Miles Doliak. And I looked it up and I was like, oh, yeah, it's him. So. Yeah. Okay. That's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Miles is, is great. Miles is a good friend of mine. So Miles and I met um, probably like, a long time ago, it was a, a feature film I shot as a DP and he acted in. It's called Jake's Road. Um, and that was made a long, that was a long time ago. That's where we met. And then Miles went on and, and started making his own films in, in Mississippi. Uh, and he actually asked me to, to be gaffer of his first film, his, his mm -hmm. historian. But I was like, I told him at the time, which is true. I was like, I, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to be a gaffer, I'm going to 
kind of go do bigger jobs. And like, if I, but I'll like, I would be your DP, like I'll take a, you know, I, that's my creative thing. So like, I would love to be your cinematographer um, for less money or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but he had already hired somebody to be his DP. So, um, so interestingly enough, it's all kind of like, there's a lot of uh, Carnival provides sort of things with Miles and, and us too, is that, so then 2020 comes along and, you know, COVID and whatever, and I'm kind of make this decision that I want to make off ramp and Miles reaches out to me through our mutual friend, actually, who directed Jake's Road, because Miles was going to do a new film called Demigod. Um, mm -hmm. And he reached out and asked if I wanted to be the cinematographer for Demigod. And uh, we, I, I did, and we went and uh, we filmed it in 2020 in um, uh, Mississippi. And we really found a kinship. We were, we were very, um, you know, it's funny because I always like to, I like to joke with them because we have like slightly different taste in movies, but we both had the same passion for, for cinema. And, um, and so anyway, so Miles, we, we shot, uh, we did Demigod. And again, we just found like a real connection. We just really worked really well together. Um, and uh, Demigod came out and was really pleased with the way it looked and stuff. So then we've, then we also, so then when off ramp and, and also too, Miles is like independent spirit really like inspired me too. It also showed me like, oh, hey, you really can make a feature film for, you know, not that much money and you can really get a lot. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's a lot of money, but you know what I mean? The comparative, yeah. you think of millions mm -hmm. and you're like, no way you can do it for less. Um, and, you know, he, we really like, uh, and so it was like, oh, wow. And his, his like independent spirit really like was very, you know, inspiring. Mm -hmm. So it, it also helped me kind of led me even more to be like, okay, I'm making off ramp. So then when I'm making off ramp, um, the part of Randy Cox comes up and we, and Miles, you know, I'm like, Miles will do this part and it will he'll be great. Miles is already from Mississippi. Half the work is already done. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> Miles was outstanding. In it. He did a great job. I mean, he, he brought, uh, you know, um, Miles is also, if you, as you know, he's a pretty well-known actor in New Orleans. So he's been around, like, you know, he's in a lot of other bigger movies too like renfield and he was in like the perfect yeah that's what i always like about he'll like you said he makes all he makes a lot of cool independent weird movies and then he'll pop up in renfield and like some mainstream stuff so i yeah. like that about him yeah. yeah well i think you know you got to pay the bills and you know and also too i mean he's an actor and i think uh you know he's a filmmaker too but you know i think you know he'll even tell you that the reason he started making films was so that he could have more roles for himself as an actor too mm -hmm. and that was kind of like his initial you know, entry into it. Uh, so then, so then, you know, when my, and then, you know, it's like also too, whenever Demigod, whenever he was editing Demigod, I was like, well, send me some of it. Let me look at it. And so I helped him kind of give him, gave him some notes on editing Demigod. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then we made, I made a shot off ramp and then, uh, right after, not right after, but after off ramp, then I went and shot another movie for him called open. So I was doing his cinematographer on open. And then he would help me edit, you know, he gave me notes on all the edits of off ramp. And then uh, we just did another movie called Boneface that he, he did, he produced, he didn't direct, but another a horror movie called Boneface in Mississippi uh, that's entering kind of its final stages right now. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, so, and then I've also like Miles is also the chair of the digital filmmaking department at Loyola, New Orleans. And so I've gone and, done workshops with him and his students and um so yeah we we're really we're really close friends and continue to work together and we'll continue to work together oh cool yeah, yeah, i'm glad it, uh, there, it be, yeah yeah it would have been cool if he just had you just happened to cast him and i'm happy that you're you're friends <laughs> with him because i like miles a lot yeah yeah i mean uh, i think we've we've become closer ever since that you know i mean we were already friends before and we were already working but you know as the time has gone on uh, we've gotten closer and, and closer as collaborators too. I mean, I think we uh, see a lot of the same independent spirit. And, and I think too, you know, as an independent filmmaker, you, you need those other people who are as passionate because it's just, it's, uh, it's just, you know, it's hard enough as it is and you, you, you have to really care. And, and, and he is someone who really cares. And, mm -hmm. uh, 
so yeah, so it's we 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 will continue to work together. Uh, yeah, it looked like he really had fun with the role. It's a lot different uh, role than I see him uh, usually in. So. Yeah, he's great in it too. I mean, yeah, I think, he is. You know, Randy Cox. I think Randy Cox is kind of one of those like sneaky good characters too in a movie. You know, yeah. <laughs> he kind of seems like sort of like like just kind of like nothing, but then in the end, he's actually pretty. You know, he's actually got some depth to him, and and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's 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 a, he's a great character. Yeah, and uh. Not to get like ahead of yourself again, but uh, so you're doing the festivals and uh, you're talking about the community feel, all these things. And so uh, off ramp is running the festivals right now. Then eventually people get to see it. Then after that, do you have a feeling like, well, now I have to keep making stuff so I can uh, continue to uh, go to these festivals? I mean, not just for the festivals, but you know. Absolutely. I mean, that's all I ever want to do is make movies. Um, I, and I don't ever want to do anything else. Uh, so. Mm -hmm um we i mean i'll do you know what you know what i mean but yes yeah. i really want to do to, to make films uh and so my co-writer tim cairo and i um have we've written two scripts since off ramp um we're working on a third and then we're working we have two other ones kind of in mind as well so mm -hmm. we're just kind of continuing to to work on that part of course the you know then the the challenge becomes you know funding them becomes the, the, the harder part uh, so we're hoping that off ramp, you know, some people see it and maybe want to help us or invest in what they see. Um, uh, if there's anyone out there that's interested, please hit me up. I have great ideas. Um, uh, and uh, we're also looking at kind of making one like really ultra low budget as well. You know, something that we can do that's really, you know, um, just to do something else, you know. Um, uh, and and two, you know, we want to there's things we want to do within it like specifically within the genre i think i think everything we'll do will always have like a tinge of genre mm -hmm. but i don't know that it'll ever like i don't know it's 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 a it's also like it's become like a debate within myself right because you know the sophomore project is such a challenging one you know what i mean like it, it, i always i say like i mean you know it's like you want to you want to make the bends you know like radiohead's second album is great you know their first album is great their second album is great you know, but then so there's a lot of bands that their second album, you know, because and it makes sense. You're spending like so many years playing those songs and working on this one piece of art for such a long time. And you're like, it might be five, ten years that they're making this one piece of art. And then suddenly it's like, OK, now do it again in nine months. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yep. So. So, yeah, we're working on a number of things. We have a number of uh, like ideas that we're working out um sort of working on a third one right now too um just i think just we're just kind of just experimenting and writing and seeing what what hits um it's also like a challenge because you just want to like it's hard to know when you're a filmmaker like what you know it's like all right we've succeeded like it's a film that people like it connects with people like people like it so how do you do it again <laughs> <laughs> well, what yeah, is your you, favorite you, part of this process because I, I, you like being a director, but then the writing. So there are all these different areas. And what do you think you most enjoy? Um, I mean, I think I think I'm a I think I'm a was a successful director because I wrote it or co wrote it. You know, because when you know the characters inside and out, and especially when you spend as much time on it as Tim and I did over so many years, um, uh, like I think they're both really. I mean. I, I think my the favorite my favorite time is shooting I think mm -hmm. really because when you're but I do really like the right that's they're all great for their own reasons and they're also all terrible for their own reasons um you know writing is great because it's everything is possible and the page is doesn't cost anything and you can you know ink and paper cost nothing so you can just do whatever um but at the same time it's 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 kind of slow going and it's like it's a challenge you know it's hard to kind of like keep yourself motivated to get through it and do it all and then sometimes you know but it but it is really one of those parts of the process that you do sort of like discover something mm -hmm. but then you remember too that like a script is like a living document and it's not it's not intended to be the final piece of art mm -hmm. you know like a novel is the final piece of art um but a but a, a script is really a roadmap for the final piece of art. Mm. So, 
you know, you then when you make the film, you know, because also then you include the actors and they add another level of collaboration to the whole thing. And, you know, there's, you know, it's there's not a ton of improv, but there's enough improv in off ramp that like it's like there are some really like great lines and bits that the actors came up with. And then there's other funny things that we came up with together, like sitting around reading the script, you know, reading through it. Um, and then there's other things that like I came up with at the very last second as we're rolling and I'm like, okay, say this. And then they just say it and then it makes it in the final cut. Um, so I think that that's another great part of the process. You know, I also really do enjoy editing, although it can be really, you with editing, you go through a really strong set of emotions mm -hmm. because you're like, you, you sort of like, at first you're like this is all garbage and then <laughs> and then and then you're like oh maybe it's not so bad and then you're like oh okay this is pretty cool and you know and it's like it's such a, but that's kind of how every step is it's kind of always like you know it's kind of like ebbs and flows and there's there's things that you like and don't like but i do really like editing um especially when it's working and once you kind of get into it um but then like doing the, you know, like also like just like the music, like I, working with my composer and like, you know, I, again, I just give them a bunch of notes and a bunch of ideas and a bunch of music songs and I'm like, make it sound like this. But then getting those files back and like listening to them for the first time and putting them next to the video, it's just such a cool, it's just magic, you know? Yeah. Um, I think just well, it sounds like you enjoy all of it. Really. I, that's, I love that, it. that's a great thing. That's, you know, you're right, Troy. I love it all. Yeah, that's a great thing. <laughs> I think I, you know, I'm I'm also a little bit more technically proficient than I think some other filmmakers, just from mm -hmm. having done as much as I've done and been around. So I think it's, you know, none of those steps feel too daunting to me, um, except when it comes to the money stuff. I'm terrible with that, um, but. <laughs> But uh, the other stuff, I, I guess I've, I've done, you know, I was like the editing TA in, in college, grad school and the cinematography TA, so. Do you think that helped when you're actually there directing? Because then you can kind of foresee, like, how this will be edited or the different, you know, different aspects of the filmmaking. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, the shot selection, you know, is very, very, you know, very much a part of that. Um, and uh yeah i think that the, i definitely think having that experience editing allows me and and shooting as well i mean that's another big thing is um you know being a dp most of you know for a lot of times um it, it also helped me and it's an interesting one too because i i was i on my short i was both the cinematographer and the director and i and afterwards i I, I realized that I was like focusing too much on the photography because it's kind of my natural thing, a natural place to be. And uh, so when I made off ramp, I wanted to hire a cinematographer and I was mm -hmm. hired such an awesome one, Bron Moy. Uh, he uh, is a friend of mine who I knew. And like, we, we got to know each other because we worked on, uh, worked on a TV show together and, and Bron was the set dresser, the onset dresser. And I was a gaffer. And Bron started telling me he was interested in photography. And so we would kind of like talk about it and we'd talk about the lighting setups and stuff like that. So I knew that Bron was one of those people that I could like, like I could talk to because oftentimes a director and a DP will kind of clash about certain things. Uh, and, and I knew that Bron and I wouldn't clash. Uh, I knew that he would, if I wanted to say that's too bright or that's too dark, that he would be okay with making a, the adjustment that I wanted. And uh, at the same time, I was incredibly surprised and blessed by with what he did contribute. I mean, he was, did an incredible job. And I think, you know, I, I don't think I would, I think if I would have shot it, I would have not done nearly as good, you know, and he did contribute so much to it. Um, and even like all the dog footage, like he basically shot most of that on his own um, mm -hmm. because we, we ended up like the way that schedule worked out I needed to record John doing some voiceover so that when we started editing it, that we would have the voiceover to edit too, because it was almost like music, you know, it had to have, like, we couldn't do it just afterwards. Like it needs the rhythm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so we had this one day where I went and like recorded all the voiceover and was like, 
here you go, Bron, here's the dogs, just go. He And he knew the script. He knew that, like, the moments in the script that we needed to have, like, you know, the two dogs and the three dogs and the four dogs. And, you know, and, like, he knew that those things. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. So, um what was the first one? The first one was Poland. Um, was Buff the first one in the United States that you played? <laughs> no, excuse me. Uh, no, New Orleans. So we went from Splat in Warsaw to New Orleans Film Festival and uh, then to Sherman Oaks Film Festival in, uh, in Los Angeles. And then Buff was our East Coast premiere. And those were all in the first three were in 23. So Buff was our first one in 24. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have Buff as our East Coast premiere and the first one in 24, then Panic, then Calgary. And then we'll also be playing virtually uh, for Chattanooga as well. Just uh, something to think about when you said about being strategic. That's also for anyone out there, the idea of festivals like to, like to have their premiere. So like there's a world premiere, then maybe the U.S. premiere, East Coast, West Coast, and all these different things. Yeah, your premiere status is one of the things, the few things you have to sort of like offer um, a festival. Um, so, you know, it's a good thing to, uh, you, you do have to sort of, that's one of the weird things you have to sort of, you have to get your world premiere and you want your world premiere to be a festival that, that sort of makes a dent in, in, in things. And um, we were really lucky because we got the notification we were in New Orleans and then right afterwards, Warsaw Splat called and and our sales agent, the Coven, helped hook that up. And uh, and so it was really great. We were able to get those and they, they were played. They were really close to each other and, and it worked out really great that way. Um, but yes, you do have to like sort of be strategic about your premiere status. Uh, so thankfully, now we have we're going to go play at Calgary and we'll be the our Canadian premiere. So, yeah. That sounds cool. We have a ton of Canadians and juggalos in our audience. So, uh, yeah. yeah, guys, uh, here's a Canadian here, uh, John Reddy. Uh, because you said about making an ultra low uh budget movie here, maybe. Uh, any tips for doing it when you're low in cash? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the great thing is you know, use what you have available. Um, you know, the, the, the cheapest thing that you're ever gonna do is is, is the script. And you always have the chance to change the script. Um, so if something is is too impossible or too expensive, then cross it out, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I mean, I say that jokingly, but I really mean like, you know, use what you have available. Um, I, for instance, I knew one of the things that I always, like I have a friend who works in, uh, he has, he he's a picture car guy. So he owns all these cars, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what he does. He, you know, rents his cars to movies and it's a really cool kind of thing. Uh, so I knew I had that at my disposal. And so I asked him, and we made, like, do you have like a crazy van? And he was like, I've got this blue van with, with, with flames on it. I was like, that's the one. And, <laughs> um, and so, you know, that was a thing. And I also knew, like, I knew that the car, you know, a lot of people will tell you that shooting in a car is, you know, not the best, but I, I use it as a cheap way to do it because it was like, I had, I had done it before a lot of times on movies. And so I think use what's, use what's available. Try it. The, one of the other main things is if you can have one central location, um, we had one central location, which was Scarecrow's house. And uh, we basically shot everything kind of around it. So even if we weren't shooting at Scarecrow's house, that was sort of our like base camp. But like having to move from one place to the other really costs you a lot of time. So mm -hmm. if you can if you can stay in one place, um, that's a really good tip. The other thing is is that there is always a solution. There's always a way. You know, working on bigger movies and TV shows, you rarely ever had the opportunity. You can't really say no. You know what I mean? Like you can't if they ask you to do this thing, you're like, no, there always has to be a way. Yeah. There's always a solution. The show must go on. So, you know, look, look for those solutions and, and you got to be creative about the solutions. And the other thing is, is that every obstacle is often an op op often an opportunity. Um, and, you know, it's like it's it's easy to hear those things and then kind of like, oh, yeah, whatever. But then when you really, you really, you really experience it. It, it really can be the truth. Um, we had some uh, like unfortunate stuff happen where we ended up losing some footage. 
uh, from the initial shoot. So we had to do reshoots. But in the meantime, we were able to edit the movie, like get a, a, a cut of what we had. And we really were able to see where we sort of like were missing certain pieces and parts. And so when we went back and did the reshoots, we really like it, it, the film got better because of what we reshot. Um, and uh, so even though I wouldn't like recommend losing footage and it was it's awful and what it was, um, it was also really in the end, the carnival provides and it became better as a result. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, it would be cool if you could show it, uh, you know, monks like juggalos. And, uh, have any reached out <coughs> since the movie? I don't know if they're really big. It'd probably be more so when it's like out on video on demand or something like that. Yeah, we've had a lot of juggalos reach out. I mean, one, there's, um, you know, there's a handful of great juggalos who are in the movie, you know, Scotty mm -hmm. D and Jimmy Soda and Mankini. And um, they're, they're really cool. And there's friends of mine and they have like help you know kind of post about the film and so get their friends around um at panic fest we had like a, you know a, a handful we had like four or five juggalos and actually at buff uh, funny enough like i i could get like after buff i got like this this instagram message from this girl who just wrote i'm a i'm an inst i'm a i'm a juggalo and a film a film buff uh and i just want to say thank you for making off ramp and oh, that's awesome. uh, it was really cool. Yeah, that's she, great. She's uh, she has like this film club that we're going to be doing. We're going to be screening oh, no. for next week. Uh, she was actually a, she told me she was a pre screener for Buff, so she like oh. films oh. all the time. But it was really cool because she just reached out. And then like recently, I did a, a podcast with this uh, juggalo uh, named Humble Among, who <laughs> he uh, he's got a pretty successful podcast about. about actually, did the same. Uh, uh, platform that we're using right now and uh he was like hey can i you know he just again he reached out i think because also too like off the off ramp instagram page you know we have a lot of juggalo friends and of course i follow yeah. almost every juggalo i can find and you know i'm always you know posting stuff and so after each one of these screenings there's been like a, a rash of people of juggalos who reach out um and uh and the after the humble among he asked for a screen you know if he could screen it and do a review and uh, he loved it. He gave a really awesome review of the film. And so then, you know, I had a handful of jugglers follow us after that. And then I, he was like, can we do an interview? And I did an interview and like, it went great. And he was really, you know, and, and again, I get another 25, 30 jugglers, you know, following mm -hmm. us, us, you know, DMs saying, where can I watch it? So, and I think because it's like, you know, the jugglers are such a, um, they're a tight knit group and they're also, you know, they like, you know, just like all of us, we all kind of like to discover things like yeah. movies and music. And like, I think that's part of what makes our fandom. So um, rabbit is like, whenever you get to find something yeah. and it's, and it's yours in a way. Yeah. Um, and so I think that um, I think because of that, I think a lot of jugglers are, are really excited to check it out. And again, like I said, I mean, to me too, I, I hope that they feel like, Hey, somebody finally kind of got us, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a group that, you know, we kind of talked about that uh, for the most part, when people talk about them, it's not necessarily in a good way. So uh, they probably, you know, to go in thinking, oh, this is, you know, going to be whatever, and then find out like, oh, no, this is a fun movie and they present us in a good way. And so I could definitely see once they once they start seeing it, you know, they're going to tell other uh, people to check it out. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I hope that we keep spreading it, you know, keep spreading the word. So I just want to ask, because um, you talked about, you know, different movies you like that don't really fit in, into a genre or genreless films. So what kind of movies like got you to want to make movies? What were the stuff like you grew up and like, oh, this I would like to do this? I mean, I am a massive movie fan. I think you can probably see all wow. the posters around oh, here. That's nice. Uh, Stanley Kubrick is one of my favorites. There's a bunch mm -hmm. of Kubrick films. This one is inappropriate, but it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the one from Ghana, right? Yes, yeah. you, you uh, know, it's from it's from it's from Ghana. It's from uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, Deadly Prey Gallery is where I got. Yeah, it. that's awesome. Uh, oh. Kubrick is a really massive inspiration for me. Uh, probably my single favorite filmmaker um, mm -hmm. is probably Stanley Kubrick. Um, 
uh, although I really love David Lynch and Andre Tarkovsky and all these other guys too. Um, as a kid, the movie that made me like really notice, and I, I think, and it's also a really big influence on Off Ramp, and there's a lot of pieces of Off Ramp, uh, is uh, Raising Arizona. It was a really, oh, wow. really nice. huge, huge influence for me. I mean, I think that again, Raising Arizona is one of those movies that's like, it's a comedy. But there's like real human yeah. drama in it. Oh yeah, there's all kinds of jazz happening in that movie. And uh, to me, I I'm emotional when I watch that movie. You know, yeah. so there's there's also emotional parts of that movie. And my parents showed it to me at a pretty young age. And I also I think back and I think it was the first film that made me like notice the camera. Like I think you know mm. I, I really f like noticed what the camera was doing. Uh, all those awesome doggy cam shots and the and the you know looking down the looking down the uh, the aisle as they're going like all those shots you know that just really kind of like it really kind of made me look at things differently and sort of see what the camera was doing as a storytelling piece um, and uh, and also a movie about kind of misfits and people who kind of don't belong and you know these kind of things and don't belong in society and stuff. So raising Arizona was a really was a really big influence on me, and is a big. I mean, there's even like, uh, you know, if you notice, you know, Silas sings down in the Willow Garden to his mm -hmm. Meemaw, which is the murder ballad that Helen Hunt sings to Nathan Jr. in in uh, Raising Arizona. Um, so that was a really big influence. Then you know, I always liked films, but then you know, when I was, I, when I saw Pulp Fiction, it really changed everything for me. It was definitely like. Oh my God! I, I have to know what this is. What is this magic trick this this person pulled on me? Um, I had already seen Reservoir Dogs and loved it, um, but I think Pulp Fiction really just like a it just it just hit me like a ton of bricks. You know, it was just like I had to like reach. Yeah, yeah, I think that was a movie too that made me also realize that like you know there's other movies out there that are that you know there's so many more movies because you know there's so many references he's making, <clears throat> and as you keep digging and also just the idea that you could reference films um and you know i was also i was like really big into like fellini as like as like in high school um uh eight and a half was a really big you know one for me um and uh i love terry gilliam you know brazil uh, i mentioned david lynch he was a big one and of course wild at heart is a huge one for me here um, another one that was a more recent that really inspired me uh, is uh, Reiner Werner Fassbender. Uh, he did a movie. He's done a number of great movies, but one movie he did was called Ali Fereed's a Soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Um, he he uh, the beginning of that movie starts. It just like it has like a title card at the beginning of the movie. And it says happiness is not always fun. And mm -hmm. I was in a really dark place in my life and i like saw that and was like wow this is just it just hit me like a ton of bricks yeah. and so then i i then borrowed that phrase and i use it in off ramp all the time <laughs> so like they say it multiple times and it becomes like a mantra in the film mm -hmm. um and uh you know so i think that's great you know so yeah i mean those are some of the ones but also like uh, i would say you know the shining is probably my favorite horror movie um i also love rosemary's baby um that was a great one i'm wearing a mandy t-shirt oh I'm yeah i love that shirt yeah. yeah mandy mandy is a really really That's big my favorite nicholas cage movie i think so. it's yeah it's that really, one's great it's really good yeah i i think nick cage is uh, i think he gets a he gets a bad rap just because he works so much but i mean i would say of my like i think the, i mean raise i just mentioned two of my favorite movies Raising uh, yeah, right Man, wild at heart Mandy, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, it's all Nick Cage. And we don't even mention Adaptation or Leaving Las Vegas. I mean, he's mm -hmm. the guy's a solid, solid actor. Uh, yeah. His uh, new one I really enjoyed, too. Um, what was it called? Um, Arcadian. Oh, Arcadian, yeah. And then he's got Long Legs coming out. He's got many films. Yeah, he's and all over the place. Long Legs looks really cool. Oscar yeah. Lawrence is a pretty cool director. Black Coat's Daughter was really, really wild. I really really thought that was great I yeah, also, and i like that they don't show much about it like in the trailers or anything it's very weird just peculiar uh posters and things i like that yeah uh, what was your what was your what, the, uh, anything specific in the movie that jumped out to you to y'all any moments that you uh, want to ask me about or anything well some we can't tell we don't want to we want people to uh to, to yeah. see it but uh annabelle anything that you want to do uh bring up 
Put um, you on, put you on the spot. <laughs> why are you putting me on the spot? I don't know. So I'm, just, I'm just trying to be nice. Yeah. That's not what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I talk good. We don't. I can. Uh, no, but I, I. Well, some a lot of stuff you brought up because I do actually because I brought this up last week with Phil, uh, Bill, uh, John Philbin from Return of the Living Dead. But it, uh, a big part of that what works in that movie is that all the kids seem like they actually know each other and they're like friends. And I thought that was really strong. You brought up, but it, I think that's really strong and off ramp that the two characters seem like they're like friends, and that's very natural. And uh, and sometimes that's hard to pull off and. I think that really it, it makes you uh, care about what's going to happen to them, and also just kind of uh, believe the movie. Thank you. Yeah. No, that's uh, I feel very lucky. I, we had a really incredible cast, uh, and they all, you know, really they bought into the script and really, you know, brought it yeah quite a lot to it. So it and really- uh, the uh, set decoration in the house is just so weird with the paintings <laughs> on the wall, like the whole walls are covered in paintings and. I, I think that just it's just weird. It's like I'm in another world, and uh, I guess I'm in the juggler world. But I like that. It's just a strange, strange feeling. Thank you. Yeah, I had a great production designer, Michael DeMarco, did awesome. Uh, I knew that I wanted to. You know, you drive by a trailer, and they have that aluminum foil in the windows, and I always <laughs> thought that's such a thing. And that's like I wanted to do that. Uh, plus, I was like, well, we can shoot it at day or night because if it's mm-hmm. daytime, we'll just light it. Oh, like yeah. That. Nighttime, we'll just you know. So basically, we essentially blacked out the windows, but then shot mm-hmm. light in when we wanted. And that's another one of those little things that, like, I learned from working on movies that, like, you know, ways to. That was something I thought of that was like, oh, this will save us because we're not, you know, relying on the outside. Um, right. So that's another one of those little kind of little things. But and, uh, where can people follow you to and and uh, off ramp to see you know where it's going next, and then eventual you know. Uh, release absolutely so we have a website www.offramppfilm.com uh, singular not plural offramppfilm.com uh, and that has links to all a lot of our reviews and things like that and i'll link this uh, on there as well and then uh, on instagram we are at offramppfilm uh, on instagram uh, we all we have a facebook page but it's really old and i it's on my list to update so don't look at it now but soon enough <laughs> if you can Right. Uh, and then I am on Instagram as Damn Nathan, D A M N A T H. Oh, you fit right in. Terrible Troy, Nasty Neil, Damn yeah. Nathan, and the right. uh, you know. elector. Um, uh, exactly. I, I do fit right in. Damn Nathan is exactly. <laughs> I should change my screen name, but I figured out the director. Uh, I should keep it that way. Um, but yeah, so so yeah, so Damn Nathan or or Off Ramp Film. But yeah, please follow us and and keep a lookout. And if it's out there, you know, watch it, please. Yeah, definitely. And uh, if if you can, uh, while it's at the festivals, uh, go see it with people. And then hopefully, oh, yeah. you know, uh, so theatrical uh, releases would be great. To, it is definitely, I didn't get a chance to see it with the audience, unfortunately, but uh, I I could definitely see most of the movies at the festival are ones that you'd like to see with, uh, with a lot of people. I will say it is a very much a theater movie. I didn't even know, like I said, I, I, seeing it in a theater, like it's a it's a great experience. I had no idea that it was going to be like that. You know what I mean? Like I didn't know that it would hit in the theater as well as it did. And it is a really, you know, the laughs, the cringes, the sh- oh, you know, yeah. all that stuff all really works really well with the, with the crowd. So if you can, I recommend, uh, like I said, we're doing Calgary. We're going to do uh, Chattanooga virtually, but I think they're doing like a live stream event kind of thing with it. Um, okay. And then there's a, um, and then there's gonna, there's still a couple other festivals that are out there that we may still play um, before the fall when we anticipate it being released. So mm-hmm. if you see it come your way, please come and check it out. Yeah, this has been awesome, and we'd love to have you back sometime. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. yeah. Maybe after the film's out too, and then we can talk about yes. all the Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Maybe we'll get some of the cast on too. That'd be cool. Absolutely great. They they are yeah. awesome and they they love doing that kind of stuff too. So so if uh, absolutely let's let's put it together. All right. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Yep. So check sounds out off ramp. And honestly, this was uh, great having you on. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So much. Super. Thank and you. Congratulations on getting you know the, not just the first feature, oh, that's but so like cool. I see a lot of people talking about it, and that made me happy. Mm-hmm. And a cool snow globe. 
I yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> it made me, me kind of envious, but like, it is a very, yeah, very yeah. cool snow globe. I am, I would be envious. Oh, man, I would imagine my like, horror when I was in the Boston airport. I'm like, <laughs> I have to, I can't, I, this is not staying here. <laughs> uh, well, thanks so much, y'all. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Clowns, you know, um, and, uh, and the carnival provides and, uh, yeah, egg hatchets, everything. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks so much for having me, y'all. Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Right. See, we're you gonna go to, see you soon. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to have Naomi Grossman on. I see she's in the backstage area. So we'll have her on here soon. Awesome. All right. Thank All you. Right. You carry on. Yep. Thank you. All right. We'll take a few minute break and we'll be right back here All right. with Naomi Grossman. And um, all this genre, it's number one is a good one. Uh, the other ones, I don't know who the guy in the hockey mask is. <laughs> I say I'm crazy, but I'm not insane. I would never have, uh, you know, killed those kids if my little boy went at the bottom of Crystal Lake. So I do not admit to that fellow being anything in my life. <laughs> Were you surprised when they made, like, a sequel to it and, you know, they used uh, Jason Voorhees in them? Since, you know, in the original one, he's supposed to be dead. Well, I just told you, I don't accept those movies. Okay. I just don't admit to them. No. And, you know, the, the second one was made by our assistant uh, producer, I think it was. And uh, I had to go and do another head for him to be in a refrigerator, which is pretty ghastly looking. In fact, I have a picture of it that I have at the um, convention, you know, for the autographs. And, oh, it's, it's very bad looking with my mouth open, you know, and blood coming out. But there's a bottle of milk right next to me and a loaf of bread on the other side of my head. And so I say to the people when they want one, I said, shall I write, you know, oh, my God, this milk has gone sour. Because that's what it looks like. Right. I'm afraid, no, you're but the rest them. of them, no, I haven't. And I haven't done any of the other ones. Uh, I've been asked to do about three of them, and I won't do them. No, these, you know. This one's fine. This is an all right one, and I like what I do, and I'm only in the last 10 minutes, but I have the chance of being an actress, and, you know, and really portraying a character. And, by the way, you never see me kill anybody in that movie. Right. I'm the one who loses their head. Right. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't even there doing it. It was done by a, a guy. I mean, there's a, there's a shot of a hand with hair on the back of it. I do not have hair on the back of my hands. Do you think that's scarier, like a, a real person, like someone looks like a real person as a killer, instead of like the sequels where it's kind of like a maniac? I'm telling you, I don't accept those. <laughs> there are, there are another movie <laughs> and I'm going to stick to my guns. See, I can't really comment on um, right. to tell you the truth, because I haven't seen them. And uh, I know the guy that was uh, Steve that was in number one. Now, I didn't even know. I mean, in the one that when Jason started to come upon the scene, that Jason, mm -hmm. and uh, he had first worked with a canvas bag over his head or a paper sack or something. Mm -hmm. And then he told me when they were going to have him because he was doing all his own uh, stuff. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there was nobody there to to do it for him. He He's a good-looking man, and he said, I wasn't going to go through that window and have my face all cut up. <laughs> so he said he's the one that came up with the idea to wear a hockey mask. Yeah, Hereditary was the first film that I had ever done, so it was very exciting. Um, I think it's an amazing film. I always think it's weird watching yourself. The best way I can describe it is it's like watching a puppet of your body do things because it's you, but it's not quite you. So it's always weird. And watching a film with you in it, I always say is a very odd experience, but it's a wonderful film. And I'm so grateful to have been a part of it. Did you watch it with an audience? Yeah, the first time I saw it was the first showing at Sundance. I The only thing I'd seen before had hand was the decapitation allergic reaction sequence because I had to do ADR because they wanted to get more breathing and so I saw it beforehand but I hadn't seen any of the other bits of the film so the first time I ever saw it all together was at Sundance with a huge audience which is always a very exciting thing to do. 
you are on the station of decapitation. So uh, <laughs> what was what was that like to watch yourself be decapitated? It's one of the most uh, memorable decapitations, I think, in, in film. Yeah, I say it was very weird watching myself be decapitated. I think it's very cool. You get to like see yourself die without actually having to die. So <laughs> right. um, yeah. kind of nice in that aspect. Yeah, I, I assume, I don't know, I've never been decapitated. But if you are, I'm not sure if you get to see it. Yeah, I'm not sure if you get to see it. So you get to kind of see, like, if I was ever to be decapitated, it might kind of look like this. So um, it's just, like, warming me up for when I eventually get decapitated. Just, like, seeing what it's going to be like. Hopefully it's a long, long time from now. Yeah. <laughs> or possibly never, I guess is probably the best. You never know. You never know when you're going to get decapitated. It's always a surprise. You said the the also allergic to fire ants, and I don't know if they're fire ants, but your head, your decapitated head is a, a spoiler alert. Sorry, everybody up there, but it's covered in uh, ants after uh, the next day. Yeah. I don't know if that was that just a coincidence. I think it, yeah, it was just a coincidence. Yeah, there's a lot of always with that sort of thing. There's always a bunch of fun coincidences that kind of happen. My friends always tease me about it. Um, I just think it's kind of funny. <laughs> Did you uh, did you watch it with? Have your parents seen the movie? Yeah, my parents have seen it. My mom saw it with me the first time I saw it. Um, Ari actually showed her the decapitation sequence before um, right. the um, it was, yeah, it might film. be a little strange, like, right? Yeah. yeah, you know, your parents might want to see that beforehand. Um, my friends, when they saw it, I always love watching it with people for the first time when I know them because I think it's always very entertaining. Um, one of my friends was just laughing the whole time. She thought it was really funny that I was in a movie. Hey, and we're back here at the station of decapitation without your head. I'm still Nasty Neil. Would make me terrible, Troy. This is Annabelle Lecter. Mm -hmm. And we're joined. And, and I'm not Naomi. <laughs> And we're joined by the return of Naomi Grossman. It's very nice to have you back. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, and you're dressed up for the occasion. I feel underdressed oh, now. Very cute. Oh, not really. It kind of looks like I'm not wearing anything, but I am. <laughs> okay, <all right. laughs> you could have left it up to our imagination. That's yeah. True. <laughs> Just have like the little fur on. Without my head. How about without my torso? <laughs> there, without my yeah. top on. Yeah, with the whole spinoff <laughs> show. It's the after hours program. <laughs> but uh the so before last time we had you on it was before we got to see american horror story mm -hmm. and uh Annabelle and i got to see it and it was amazing and it's yes. cool to have you back and uh and talk about it more in depth yes i'm thrilled yeah i love it i love it yeah so um one of the things like uh before before we saw it i asked about how much pepper meant to you and you said you kind of go into that and that was a big part of it of your of your one woman show, you know, is Pepper, and I was wondering. Okay, so you're someone who makes a lot of uh, jokes about things that are personal to you, which is something that I can, I can really relate to, and uh, you joke in uh, in your show about playing the getting famous for the ugliest person on TV, and yeah. you're saying that as a joke. But is there it was there ever any part of that 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 affected you that like? maybe hurt your feelings or and also a follow-up to that is we also see your journey to get pepper so if you would have got pepper early in your career as opposed to you know really fighting uh in hollywood to get a role would would you have looked at that role different maybe you wouldn't have taken it i don't know oh i definitely always would have taken it um yeah no i would i could have definitely gone without the what 22 years of right, right, right. driving the Red Bull car into shopping malls <laughs> and nude modeling in uh, art classes and dancing for money at bar mitzvahs. Like I, I, I could, I would have loved to have been just a child star. Like, you know, I'd love to be Drew Barrymore, just kind of cruise through life since I was five, but no. Um, uh, you know, it's interesting. I've definitely never been one of those actresses who like needed to be pretty. Like I've always felt that that was, I mean, I, on one hand, I get it. Like, uh, uh, you know, I went to the movies last night and 
I was just like oh, yawning until the Ryan Gosling trailer, and I'm like, eh, no, <laughs> a shot of espresso. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, I understand why we like to see pretty people, but at the same time, like, it shouldn't be about that. Like we all, it's about telling stories yeah. and, and, um, you know, we all have a story. Uh, some people are the backgrounds of our story. Some people are the foreground, like some, you know, but, um, it, it's not like only pretty people have stories out there. So, um, <laughs> I guess like it always, that was always weird to me. Like if anything, if I were ever kind of fantasizing about a role, it was always like the, the bad guy or the, the, the Maleficent, you know, the one with the furry costume, like mm -hmm. the one with the big wig or the, like, I was just all about kind of over the top. So yeah. being, you know, I'm sure I'd love to be over the top attractive, uh, but as long as I'm over the top, then I'm, I'm good. Um, or, well, I shouldn't, but that I guess that's what I, what I'm saying is that's the kind of character that draw it always kind of uh, drew me in, not necessarily the attractive one, unless I'm on in uh, you know, unless I'm an audience member, and then yes, I'm absolutely attracted to Ryan Gosling. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, in to answer your question, when it never bothered me if again, I just I was starved for attention still am let's face it i'm an actor like this is the you know this is sort of our what gives us life and so um i i would say uh the only moment it sort of gave me pause was when i was recognized for the first time when i was like walking down sunset boulevard and somebody stopped me and said pepper wow. And, you know, can I get a selfie? And then I, I mean, of course I was like, oh my God, that's what that feels like. Like, I've always wanted that. Yeah. <laughs> I realized, oh, wait, they recognize me for playing the ugliest person on television. Like, hmm, do I, do I want that? Um, and of course the answer is still yes. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was a, kind of a funny legacy. And then honestly, like, it's just crazy how much, how much attention I got for not being ugly. Like, again, uh, you know, uh, you're quite adorable of, uh, of Ryan Gosling. Um, you know, I'm not Selma Hayek. I'm not Penelope Cruz. I'm not, you know, fill in the blank, uh, 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 you know, ingenue. Okay leading lady. Um, but at the same time, it was, it was just so interesting how they were, I remember the, um, I want to say it was like people magazine or something quoted me as saying, I've never been told I was pretty so much. It's not that no one's ever told me I was pretty, but it's, I've, I've never been told I was pretty so much as when I played an ugly person oh. <laughs> like um and granted i never had millions of people see me as, as an ugly person all at once either so you know when you do the math when you think about the statistics and the you know it's all relative um but yeah i, I mean i do uh, you know, I'm going to be honest, Alok and I have fallen down this um, F boy Island uh, rabbit hole, which I don't think he's, I don't think he wants me admitting to anyone, <laughs> much less online for, you know, poor people or people he respects uh, to, to be. But, um, you know, let's face it, it's a lot of pretty people and we, we enjoy it. We're also mm -hmm. horrified by it and embarrassed and aren't proud and, um, you know, and can do better. We really, we really <laughs> but anyway, I guess, you know, pretty people have a, a place in, uh, in media. I just, I don't really care if I'm part of it. Yeah. And you I don't have... think that's just me. Like, being not the cutest girl in school and like i i really just don't care like i would yeah. rather be known for other things like let's face it 
beauty is not going to last. Like I would, I'd rather have a long career. I'm playing the long game on this one. I want to be the Betty White. I want to be rolled out, you know, in a gurney (laughs) off the set when I'm 99, you know, not rolled out when I'm, you know, 25 because I'm not 24 anymore, you know? Right. What? That was a good answer uh, to my question. I, I like that. And the, But anyway, uh, that was a big thing that I related to is just uh, the comedy in it. And I and I think what uh, any good art, people can relate to it in different ways and take something else out of it. Because I know Annabelle related to a lot of your stories for, for different reasons. Definitely. I've been into the rocky, wide, was I with this person? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I... I I think that's one of the things I really like about the show because let's face it, I've had a very eclectic journey, one that probably no one else has. You know, I've it's it's yeah. it's unique to me, yeah. but we've all fallen in love with the wrong person. We've all done jobs that were beneath us. We've all like made compromises that you know we weren't proud of and said we wouldn't do again. So I think, yeah, I think we haven't all been on top of Ryan Gosling on, on (laughs) IMDb. Um, Unfortunately, that's as close to on top of Ryan Gosling as I'll ever get. But, um, you know, yeah, we, we can all, we've all, yeah, we, it is, it's relatable. So I'm, I'm so glad that you found that. I mean, I'd be worried if you didn't like, (laughs) I mean, who, who falls in love with the right person right out of high school? Like, does that Some even happen? Some people might luck out, but I am not that person. Well, let me tell you, their comedy careers are sucking. <laughs> <laughs> no, truly, I am always like, well, thank God I've had such a, you know, rocky life because I, what else would I talk about, you know? Yeah. My exes are my mutes, <laughs> much to their yeah. chagrin. Yeah. But that made me what? laugh because it would be funny. Uh, it, it, that, thinking of the of your show, and it would just be all like, and this was great, and this was great, and this was great, <laughs> and, it, and this was perfect. And you'd just be kind of sitting there like, oh, okay, I think I'll leave now. Or something. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, pretty dull show. Yeah. Show off. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'll be honest, it's keeping people in check. You know, like I, uh, I mean, I remember. Um, well, I so I can't we can't spoil anything because the show is going next to Denver and then oh, Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Um, yes. but Amazing. which I'll tell people about that later. But um, you know, you remember the uh, iPad boyfriend? That one was couldn't miss him. Yes, he actually had the gall. Uh, this is after Terrible Troy. I found out that like he'd been cheating on me with like all of West Hollywood. Oh no. Yeah. Um, he had the gall to say like, you know, please don't write about me. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, well, have you met me? Like what, what are otherwise? Like, I mean, just take this as a learning experience. <laughs> like not, not date gay men next. Like it's crazy. So no, I really do. I feel like, you know, we take our break, broken heart, turn it into art. Like, I, I truly believe that's what I am here for. Like I, yeah. the, you know, um, I mean, Jerry Brockheimer likes blowing shit up. Like, you know, uh, <laughs> other people like, you know, mine, I, I am my own muse. And, um, you know, if given a choice between a nice life in a white picket fence with a, you know, golden retriever and whatever, or like this way more interesting, like, <laughs> uh, like fucked up fence, but with like a really interesting neighbor and, uh, you know, and a, and a, and a creepy gate. Like I'm absolutely going that way. You know what I mean? Like I, yep. I'm always like the, like, uh, if I, I'm always thinking like, can I tell it at a Chris, at a, at a co- cocktail party? <laughs> you know, like I want a good story. So I oh, literally yeah. found myself in positions where like, um, I mean, I remember once like I got pulled over for jaywalking, which is $160 ticket, at least in Los Angeles. Wow. Today. Yeah. What? And I thought when he asked, when the guy literally pulled me over, 
asked, I mean, pulled me over. I'm like, as a walking person. Yeah. He's got his siren <laughs> on. I'm just crossing the street. Um, and he, uh, he asked me for my ID and that's when I thought, I don't need an ID to walk across the right? street. So I told him I didn't have one. And then he said, Oh, you know, you don't, you don't need a, an ID or I'm sorry. He said, Oh, it's okay. I can still give you a ticket. Give me your thumbprint. I of course like dug my nails into my thumb just so that I could like <laughs> mutilate it somehow. Uh, and, um, and of course I'm thinking, you know, I've, I've watched CSI, I know what, you know, I know how to get around this. Meanwhile, I of course call my cousin who works in, he's a lawyer and he was like, Oh my God, Naomi, you lied to a cop about your identity. Like this was like a tiny little misdemeanor and you've just turned it into like a felony. Or whatever. Oh no. The point is I got a story out of it. Like had I just handed over my ID, we wouldn't be talking about this. Yeah. Like, you know, and the fact that I had to then later go back and like remember my whole lie and like oh no go to the court as this fake person, you know, <laughs> like it was ridiculous. <laughs> so anyway, I no regrets. I I you know, I I'll, I'll always turn that turn left and 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 uh, and happier for it. Yeah. yeah. And what's the option? We can look back at the things that happened and be just sad or resentful and we can have those feelings, but to be able to do something with it, then we have power over whatever yeah. that situation is. It's Run like, with it. we've got it and we're going to do what the hell we want with it. Sorry, sir. That's yeah. very sad for you. You don't want this story told, but hey, maybe don't, don't be fucking around like that. Yeah, maybe don't. <laughs> Do, maybe date men next time. Like, I, like don't You'd be a little more honest in your <laughs> quagmire of lies. Like, <laughs> if you like, yeah, seriously. And then I have other, you know, exes who are like, oh, please don't put me in it. I'm like, you're not interesting enough. Like, <laughs> don't <laughs> worry about it. What would I say? Yeah, yeah. Like, you so, wear it as a don't badge of yourself. honor if you yeah, it's it's on that like, it, it is. It's flattering, yep. but also horrifying to be in one of my shows. <laughs> I was, as anyone said, why am I not in it? Because yeah. I, I could be kind of narcissistic. I'd be like, why am I not involved in this? Yeah. Is someone going to be intentionally horrible to Naomi just to get in an act? That would be <laughs> right. Uh, someone with the same mindset. Uh, this is just going to make a story. good story and I'm going to be immortalized. <laughs> it would be so. a great story. I hope it happen. You know what? That, that, that has occurred to me. And I even thought about that when I was crafting this show because this, this guy that we're talking about, Part of me is like, let's stop talking about him. Let's give him attention. But um, truly, when I was writing it, I was like, God, he's getting way too much real estate in this. Like, he's not even that important to the story, much less me. He, like, he's like not at all important to me. So, like, why are we giving him this gift? So, I definitely had to kind of uh, craft it so that we we didn't give him enough. You know, I love that. I yeah. love that because it is something you do have control over and you could just, he could just be gone next time. You could just do whatever you want with this and bring it down, bring it up. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, don't get me wrong. When it becomes like a Netflix special, I want a billboard outside his apartment so that he has to look and he has to see it every single time he walks outside. Um, so in that regard, yes, we want, you know, I, I'm very specific in my, my writer's already written. <laughs> I know exactly what I want. Uh, so you said it's coming next to uh, Denver and then you have a, another day. I'm sorry. Uh, Edinburgh. Yeah. So um, I will be headlining the Denver fringe um, mm -hmm. in uh, June. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you have any Rocky mountain horror fans uh, watching, but the, uh, that will be June 6th. At uh, 8.30 p.m. And then June 9th at 6.30 p.m. Um, and then from there, uh, I will take it to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, which is a huge theater festival. Uh, I would say the city of Edinburgh like triples in size for the, the wow. oh, month wow. of August. Right. Yeah, it's. I went 14 years ago and took my second solo show, Carnival Knowledge, mm -hmm. Love, Lust, and Other Human Oddities. And it's absolutely bonkers. Like there's theater happening in every, every nook and cranny. I'm telling you, like, want to see a play in a church basement at midnight? <laughs> you can, <laughs> Edinburgh. Like it's bonkers. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, I will be every single night, literally 25 nights consecutively. Wow. Oh, wow. That's going to be me. Amazing. Yeah. You're, um, you're, uh, you have so much energy on stage. That's going to be uh, very demanding. I think it is. I, again, I, I've done it once before and it was the hardest and most fulfilling thing I've ever done in my life. Wow. It was, it definitely separates the men from the boys. Like, are you doing this for money? Because you're in the wrong, <laughs> in the wrong <laughs> medium. Um, and like, you don't get through it unless you really, really, really love it. And obviously I do. So I'm excited. I mean, yeah. to me, it's like Kilimanjaro, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it is so hard and it is, I'm training. I am ready for this. Um, whereas, yeah, I mean, like the Boston marathon would kill me. Like, no, thank you. I would rather do this like theater marathon basically. Yeah. And is, is, um, is that this, is it going to be the exact same show that we saw as, I mean, like, so when you do one show, do you ever take notes? Like I'm going to change this around or anything like that? Yeah, there will be some changes. Um, I don't know if they're enough to merit like crossing the pond to see it next, but um, I don't want to be responsible for that. But um, yeah, yeah I'm, I, I'm going to shave it down just a little bit. Um, not that anyone was ever complaining about the length, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, I just want it tight. Like I want yeah. just the best jokes, yeah. you know, and yeah. hopefully I won't have to, well, maybe I will. I was going to say, hopefully I won't have to hold for drunk people like I did in your show. <laughs> Um, oh but, my lord! You know, like, catch up a little bit. He was like, "Whoa!" He was so. <laughs> oh, he was wow. beyond. Um, oh, no. Which I'll tell you a, a story about him. But uh, <laughs> no, I mean, in Edinburgh, like let's face it, it's Scotland. Like it's after five o'clock, everyone's drunk. So yeah, <laughs> at nine o'clock when my show is, I have to be prepared for pretty much that every night. Wow. Fully in like so you're, six, you're six, bringing it down just so you can get off the stage. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, that dude was probably a great, a great, uh, he was great practice for me. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, that's kind of like what you're saying about looking at things. Uh, this is a story out of it. Uh, yeah. You can look at that. Well, this was good practice for if this happens in the future. Drunken well, heckler I mean, in Boston. Uh, he was a heckler, um, though. He was a supporter. Oh, he, was he, was good. Was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't a heckler. He just didn't realize that I was live on stage <laughs> in front of him. And that, like, I can hear you. It's not like the TV, oh, you know, no. where you can talk that and they don't hear you. Like, I don't know what he was thinking. I mean, he, he was drunk. But um, no, this <laughs> what I especially love about it is, I mean, you know, the show is all about the hustle, the like everything I went through to, you know, to to make it happen for myself. And yeah. the irony is I hustled that guy in like I was at that yeah. Comic Con all weekend long hustling. Awesome. Like I even told him I was like, listen. Take anything you want, you know, buy anything you want from the table. I'll I'll give you your money back if you come see the show. Or uh, the other the other way of it was, listen, don't buy a selfie now. We'll do a full photo shoot after the show. Like I was like, yeah. any way I could spin it to get them in those seats because yeah. it was a big theater and it was yeah, you know, it, it, was. Was, it was a really big theater. So I was. Uh, uh, but the irony is, so I told that guy, I was like, I was like, all right, fine. I shouldn't do this because it's money out my own pocket. But if you want to go to goldstar.com, there are half price tickets. Like, do not no. tell my producers. They will be in furious with me. And he was like, oh, where's that? How, how do I do that? I was like, get your phone. You know, oh, 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 work this. And then I was like, okay, give me your phone. I'm like Googling gold stock. Like, what's your name? Mm -hmm, okay. No, what's your email? He's like, oh, I don't have an email. <laughs> at that point, at that, that moment, I was literally like this close to writing <laughs> My own email. <laughs> this guy can get a ticket. Half price or whatever on these tickets. And at that point, I was like, "No, like your own thesis is stop making compromises. Like <laughs> take your own advice. Like walk away. Like it's one fan. It's one audience member. Like you can afford to lose him. 
<laughs> so I did. I just, like, you know what, sir? I'm sorry. This is probably not meant to be. Not for you. Yeah. No. And so I, I, and he was, but he was sold at that point. He wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. So he handed me a hundred dollar bill. And he's like, <laughs> how about this? And I was like, that will buy you a ticket. <laughs> and I said, and I, I mean, I spoke to him like a child. I was like, this is the address. You, you just got two tickets. Two. How many fingers? And I mean, and, you know, and I was like, come tomorrow and I'll see you there. Well, that was the worst <laughs> idea I ever had because he, but the shocking thing is I never thought he'd get there, but he did. <laughs> He did, and he. Oh, so this was like your w. golem. You made this one. This, yeah. this is on you. Okay, <laughs> all right. Absolutely, my fault. All like, right. I literally, like, basically shepherded this train wreck into my own show to practically derail it completely. But you know, oh, he was fine. He was he was amusingly he, anybody from that area. There's all Neil and I went to Chad Palmateri doing Bronx Side Story, and there was some dude behind us who was shit-faced and loud and horrible. Oh, it's no. just part of... It was it was much worse, because he he, he must have seen the movie, and he's just throwing out, I'm like, yeah, we've oh. seen a Bronx tale, everybody. We, ah. we don't... We'd rather hear the guy on stage say it yeah, and not to be throwing quotes from the movie right. out yeah. there. Awesome, but awesome. He thought it was like Rocky Horror, and he could like <laughs> yeah. dance in his little gold G string or whatever. Let it's me guess, funny. It's some like Southie <laughs> guy, right? So you've got this guy. You're a mega fan. He'll yeah. buy things from you for eternity. That's true. He had me yep. sign his own shirt. Remember? He yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm surprised he didn't get it like on him and tattoo it. Tattooed. Oh, God. Yes. Well, that's, that's the next time. Cool. You got to save yeah, them for next time. Right yeah. through the shirt. You could probably that. convince him to do that. You know, know what would be a good idea? Yeah. One more <laughs> shot. <laughs> uh, has Has your mom, uh, has she been to the show? Yes. Oh, awesome. That's so amazing. my mom is a huge fan of the show. She has probably seen it the most of anyone. Um, she flew out to see it in LA, um, which was brilliant because first of all, not only were we going to tape that night, but I, I, I put a mom cam up on <laughs> like above her so that we could, you know, capture her. Yeah face the whole time which is that's great classic um also there's a point in the show when i go into the audience and i ask audience members to read from her book yes. her book which is it was very saucy very <laughs> that's a very nice way of putting it um i mean also the thing that's so saucy about it is you cannot believe a 75 year old woman wrote this 85 now um so so when I had her, you know, when I had audience people read and then and then I had her read, I mean, you can oh, imagine yeah. people were already like blushing to have to say these things and they're, you know, no big deal. But to hear an old lady say these things, it's like, what? And that they were her words. Like she wrote this. That's classic. And the, the sexual escapades of her life. <laughs> The best was um, when she actually um, improvised with me. Um, oh, really? I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, I asked, I, I uh, when I offered her the book, um, the line that she was supposed to read was, was this right? It felt right. I knew with him on crutches, I could always outrun him. Oh, my God. Just insane. Um, and alone. Like, it's perfect. We don't need her to add. We don't need her to yes and. And yet, she did. She said, was this right? It felt right. I knew with him on crutches, due to a broken pelvis, I could always. <laughs> and of course, I'm hearing this for this first time thinking, what? Broken pelvis? Afterwards, she told me, she was like, well, people were going to want to know. Why was he on crutches? I was like, okay, yeah. But I mean, like. Thank you, mom. Like he could have had a twisted ankle. He could have, you know, no broken it's pelvis. pelvis. Like, How do you get that? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So good. No, but so she, uh, she saw it here. And then um, before we went off Broadway with it, we uh, just took it to my hometown where she lives in Taos, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, 
just cause I've taken my shows there in the past and they've always been very successful. I'm big in Taos. Um, but you know, it, it was also just a nice place, very low risk, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to kind of dust off the cobwebs. And, um, and sure enough, she was at every performance. I mean, she was, she was just proud. You know, the fact yeah. is apples don't fall far from the tree. She's <laughs> written a smut novel and I wrote a kind of saucy one woman show, uh, three actually. So, you know, I, I can't throw stones. Like she's done what I do. <laughs> so, you know, um, I, it's just, it's so awesome that she's cool about it. You know, that, yeah. that's just so surprising because, you know, yeah, you kind of like, a yeah. 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 loving. Yeah. I was actually a little worried about her reaction at first because you so know she didn't this, know the first time she saw it that that you read from the book or I uh, know I told her the day before I was like if we were to ask someone to do some participation <laughs> would you be will open and willing to be one of them and she said yes thanks for asking I'll wear my glasses um, but no. I didn't tell her anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think because she knew when when the book came out, I was not a fan. Mm -hmm. um, the fact is, none of us look fair, very good in this book. Like, I am a character. Oh, I, I'm not. No. I'm kind of a brat. Uh, my dad's a total jerk. My, you oh. know, my grandpa, uh, uh, he's got a few screws loose. Like, nobody's. You know, she's letting us have it. Yeah. And so I was kind of like, mm, yeah, we don't need people to read this, especially because it was actually really at the height of the pepper mania. Oh. And I was like, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like Magic Johnson sue my mom or whatever, you know. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't need to help sell her book. You know, <laughs> you know? And so that's why I just did there yeah. until yeah. I did. Like maybe I am, for all yeah. we know, with this with the show. But, mm -hmm. maybe but at least yeah. I'm getting paid too. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Not really. <laughs> I'm literally trying to sell people half price tickets using my own email address. But, <laughs> but dude, it's not. I mean, how many of these shows have you done? Oh, um, let's see. Four in LA, mm -hmm. six in Taos, three in New York, that's 13, two in Boston, 15. I will do two in Denver, that'll be 17, and then 25 in Edinburgh. So yeah. that's 47. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a math person. Yeah. No, that's pretty awesome. And it's like yeah. an hour long show. It's 80 minutes. Oh, wow. Wow. And something people should know is it's the comedy is amazing and you're performing it's not just you standing you are all over the place there's props there's all kinds of things going on there's it's videos yeah awesome yeah it's awesome it's a multimedia event ah! thank you yeah no i know it's 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 when people don't know about the solo performance genre it's it's kind of like no it's not quite stand up like you know, it's not quite just beat poetry, like okay. storytelling. It's, you know, it's definitely like there's, it's definitely stylized. It's got, I'm telling, you know, it, it's theatrical. Yes, it's 90% comedy, but like, I am might make you cry in that last 10%. Yeah. Like, you know, and I mean, that's, that's my aim. Yeah. So, you know, it's hard. It's not, eh. It's not like stand up where I could just do it anywhere. Like it kind of right. does require the pump and, you know, it needs that theater. It needs yeah. the screen. It needs the sequins. It's, it's, it's theatrical. Yeah. Um, so anyway. Yeah. And if your mom's listening, I suggest she puts out an audio version of the book. I think <laughs> that would be fun. Oh, with her reading it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. I think Naomi should put out a book of her reading it. And oh, that, that would, be cool. would be interesting for your spin, <laughs> your <laughs> extra spin on her book. I can imagine your tone might be a little different than her. Yeah, book. I was going to say that would be, I mean, I've done audio book kind of jobs mm -hmm. before, and it's, uh, but I've never been so personally involved. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, we're talking about my grandpa here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, that sounds rough. It sounds yeah, rough. I was gonna say I would just as soon not. Can I read yeah. just like <laughs> yeah? No, thank you. So forget <laughs> mom in the book. 
Uh, off topic real quick though since you brought up what's that experience like uh reading an, a book because i actually listen to audiobooks uh, almost every day um it's a skill that i don't have um <laughs> yeah. that's not true i mean it, you, honestly it's an acting job you're taking a, a it's a role i i just I find that length, like, it's just exhausting. That's what I was, because somebody I've be. listened to, well, like, The Stand was 40-something hours, but usually they're at least, like, around 10 hours or, you know. Oh, yeah, even a shorter uh, novel. Well, and those actors are usually sitting in a booth reading it continuously. Yeah. I mean, it gives them themselves breaks, but. But you're physical. You are a physical, like, even yeah. your facial expressions is, that's part of you is the physical aspect sitting there. That's great. And you've got a, a great voice and yeah. that's not part of what you love about doing this. That's true. I, I hadn't, I'd never, well, yeah, no, I'm acutely aware of like my strengths and weaknesses, but, um, and I've done voiceover before. I was thinking about just the longevity of like, uh, yeah, absolutely. Novel. But you're right. Like I am so much better on camera than I am just like I most of like that's not a skill and that you wouldn't be good at it but that I would think for you what you love is not sitting in a booth reading no yeah. no and that's again that's one of those actor jobs that like for me is a little bit of a a compromise you know it's like uh, it's acting but yeah. like can't shoot me now um <laughs> whereas I would much rather sit in a makeup chair for all that time mm -hmm. and then grunt a, a few times on camera, you know, and hobble around or, you know, <laughs> dance a name game or, you know what I mean? Like that, that's where I really excel in, in the physicality Absolutely. and, um, and nonverbal, which is ironic because this show is so verbal. That's one of the things I really love about it actually is that people are, they're like, Oh shit, she talks like, <laughs> yeah. a lot. Like she knows, like puts a lot of words together, not just yes. you know, <laughs> meatloaf, you know. <laughs> so, no, but Pepper, I think, really took off because you do bring a humanity to a character that could have just been a joke. This just yeah. could have been a comic relief yeah. character, but well, you know, and that's another thing I like. I was gonna say it's another thing I like about a horror story is yeah. that, yeah, Pepper maybe gets people in, but it's. And it, I do talk about her, but it's not about that. Like, it's, exactly. but I don't, no one's ever been like, I want my money back. I, yeah. I came for, you know. Yeah. Like people showing up for a concert and they just want that radio. That one song. song that they yes. say. Yeah. No, there's so much. I think Pepper was really small. It was kind of like just talking about that is that's part of your life, but yeah. there's a lot more to you than yeah. Pepper. It would be kind of sad if we were what twelve years later only to, had that to talk about. Like, yeah. it was a it was a great ride, and you know who knows? Show's still on. Like maybe the oh, ride's yeah. not over, but it, and certainly my career's not. You know, um, and we're gonna be talking about that later too. Oh, maybe yeah. not this episode, oh, but yeah. I, I will be back with something really cool to to share. Well, but I like the pepper well, stuff in it because it's like uh, you have to really work as an actor and then you get that part but then it's also because it's american horror story and it's not and the horror part is uh because you're hustling not what uh, someone might else right think and so e after pepper though you have to continue to hustle to to, to continue because it's that's not the end you know of you as an actor yeah i mean i'm th there is no end <laughs> right, i'm right. still hustling to get audience yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, the guest we yeah. just had on who's not a performer said that that this is this is just what i have learned about la that's what you're doing like that is that is part of the job is you are always working to get your next thing always yeah i mean when i think Endurance. about like, how many days i have actually worked in my life mm -hmm. it is insane yeah. i mean meaning like days i've like been paid or mm -hmm. clocked in clocked out you know whereas i work every day I mean, there's no Sundays. There's no uh, five o'clock. Like I work all day, every day. And it, I just don't get paid. I, you know, I get paid 
once a month, once every six months, once a year, you know, and hopefully mm-hmm. it's a good paycheck. But um, yeah, it really is. You are always hustling. You're always auditioning. You're always like, you know, you can't just go to a party and, you know, be that drunken asshole. Like you've <laughs> got to, you, you might meet the person who's going to, you know, yeah. And I think maybe LA gets a bad rap for that. Like, ugh, everybody's so fake. Everybody's just like, but it's like, well, I don't know if they're right. Fake. I think we're just. I think there's an understanding amongst people that this is just the life. This is like you're saying, this is, this is just the life you live is making connections. So you all can make things together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, um, eh, I don't know if it's who you know, but it's definitely who knows you. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, yeah. Yeah. So, um, mm. Did you do any uh, crowd interaction on your previous uh, one-woman shows? Mm, in my first solo show, which is called uh, Girl in Argentine Landscape, which is about my kind of coming of age in Argentina. I was an exchange student there. And yes, there was a point in that where I actually, I don't know if you're familiar with mate tea. It's like a... It, it it's served in like a little gourd with a straw and everyone oh, shares like no. you pour oh. water and it, you we share it around mm-hmm. anyway i actually um poured a, a a glass of you know a cup of mate for somebody um i don't know if that would go over now now with like covid times for someone to like pour you a drink but <laughs> i did do that in my first show and no, there there wasn't anything in Carnival Knowledge, the second one. Um, although, I mean, listen, there were also there was a wack a weenie that started the show. <laughs> so when it lights up, you saw me playing this vigorous game of whack a mole. <laughs> only it had, you know, dildos popping. Up. <laughs> so, you know, I was definitely playing with the audience. Like mm-hmm. if they weren't laughing, well then that whack a weenie had to <laughs> Oh, you know. Yeah. Um, I want the home version of Wacka Weenie. I'll put it here in my basement. <laughs> well, and that's why. Neil, personal. <laughs> Dear God. I was going to say, uh, that's, um, uh, I don't even remember what I was going to say, actually. <laughs> you were distracted by Neil sharing t- TMR. <laughs> oh, we're sharing for, sh- for sure. Sounded like a fun game to me. I don't know. Well, not if you're getting whacked. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was, I mean, it was, it was a good way to open the show because it yeah. sort of gave audience permission, like, this is going to be a comedy, like, yes. let's go. Um, it was a problem for Edinburgh because I realized, oh, snap, I've just written a show where I have to somehow transport this <laughs> massive machine, like, across the pond, mm-hmm. you know. So, in fact, I, I learned to juggle. And instead, I just traveled with some dildos and um <laughs> and juggle them? that's kind of cool amazing yeah <laughs> anyway did, that, did they ever get version did that ever uh have any uh awkward experiences at, at the uh at the airport did they ever like oh yeah for or? sure <laughs> <laughs> yes definitely raised some eyebrows um I also remember, uh, yeah, my my landlord coming over at one point and seeing it in my kitchen, and I was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, I'm I'm gonna double that as a cutting board, like I just <laughs> kind of want, like you know, <laughs> uh, uh, recycling, uh, you know. Um, anyway, it's uh, yeah, there was oh, a never a dull moment, that's for sure. <laughs> Is there ever any uh, surprising reactions? Um, like either people laugh at something that you don't expect them to, or or vice versa, or maybe they are shocked at something you thought they would laugh at. I mean, yeah, there's always um, there's it, it, like there's the point when I sing "Boyfriend in a Coma," which um, is. I think hilarious, which I, I think says a lot about me. Like I mm-hmm. messed up. I'm I have a dark sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, terrible Troy. I literally had a boyfriend in a coma, and so you know, for me to sing that, you know, Smith song, it's it's kind of <laughs> not in the greatest taste. Let's face it. But um, <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Some people sometimes it's just like crickets. <laughs> oh no. 
but it's not necessarily bad. I've also just taken them through this kind of traumatic story, and it's like now I laugh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Even though this was literally twenty years ago, like ah, I don't know how to feel. But that's also one of my favorite bits. Like when people are like, ah, I don't how to, I don't know how to act. Like <laughs> that's sort of one of my superpowers. I think I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's great. But it is interesting, like, um, you know, younger audiences, uh, different, different coasts, different, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'll, I actually, it's a good question. Like, what's going to work in Edinburgh? Like, I remember in, mm -hmm. in, um, with Carnival Knowledge, I had a whole, Howard Dean was very much in the zeitgeist at the time. Um, if you remember that, he was like a, Oh, I remember him. who got he basically <laughs> ruined his career because he went yeah like, he, <laughs> he made some like insane sound and then it became just like the dean was, scream yeah it was like this yeah. earworm forever <laughs> and it ended him and yeah. so anyway i i made like jokes about uh, about uh howard dean and i remember thinking nobody's gonna know who he is like no <laughs> So it's true. <laughs> I had to kind of cut that. I I think it'll all work there. You know, they have a great sense of humor. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. British people, are you kidding? Oh, yeah. I mean, let's face it, Monty Python, like yeah. all the original yeah. comedies that then came to the United States and we ruined. <laughs> like the office. The office. office. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love I mean, All in the Family, but it is based on a, on a British uh yeah, yeah. That's the name of it. Uh, Till death do us part, which is great, though. I mean, I don't think we did an ab, ab absolutely fabulous here, did we? Uh, I mean, this. Was, it's probably anyway. out there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. There's nothing original anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you're right. I love British comedy. It's, it's oh, yeah. odd. It's dry, but so weird. Yeah. It is not like well, American. Fleabag is one of my favorites. Yeah. Which actually came out of the Edinburgh Fringe. Phoebe Waller really? did it there first. Oh. And then, oh. boom, it became like this scripted, like, I mean, that's the dream. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it makes uh, sense. Besides, like, uh, the people you're actually in relationships with, like, uh, your friends uh, that, that know you personally and they go to the show, like, well, what do they think? Um... Well, you know, the Red Especially Bull girls. if they're, like, familiar with any of these people. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know I mean, I told, told the stories about, you know. Being a slacker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, once upon a time, they would not have been happy with me telling those stories. They'd be like, <laughs> we're going to get fired. But we've already been fired. So I think nobody <laughs> Um, They were at the show. You know, they were hooping and hawing. Woo! You know, uh, for, you know, when, when it came to their part. Um, actually. My first grade crush, who you remember, is a character in the show. Yes. He actually flew out. Oh, for that's amazing. For it in Los wow. Angeles. He lives in Denver, um, where we're from. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that that was so cool. You know? Yeah. What did he that. think that he was like the stud of the show? Yeah. <laughs> he was absolutely overwhelmed. He, I think he just, I think he thought this was going to be some like, I don't know, like spoken word night or something where we were mm -hmm. all going to just sit around and like read little stories about our first grade crushes or something. And then when I came out and like did a like this tour de force magnum, magnum opus with him like 40 feet high on a screen, I think he was like, oh, shit. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, he was he was overwhelmed. Um, you know, the guy who I really wish i mean don't get me wrong ipad is not allowed like <laughs> anyone at the door knows what he looks no, like no. and he is not to come in like we do not need a john wilkes booth situation no because no. he even though it's a great it might be a great story for you in the future yeah you don't need that yeah. well i don't want to say those things <laughs> to, right, about right. him to him like right, no right. Mm -hmm. i mean that's when i need a tv show like <laughs> That's what I want. I want him to have to watch it while he's not <laughs> in Chile. Um, but uh, no, the the one I really kind of wish could see it is Gabriel. He's uh, yeah. one of the other boyfriends who's yeah. 
really, I mean, he's kind of, I think he's kind of the hero. He's kind of the tragic yeah. hero. Um, it's funny. Uh, I mean, I mentioned in the show about how we had this torrid affair and then we're separated for like 14 years. Yeah. And that's part of kind of my redemption is that I, I'm reunited with him after all that time and finally get the vindication of, of, mm -hmm. you know, telling him, I was sorry about how it all went down, literally yeah. fell off a 40 foot bridge and nearly yeah. died. Um, so, you know, and what's crazy is that night, that night that I, you know, told him everything. And uh, I also shared with him Carnival Knowledge. That's that show number two, which yeah. he is also a character in. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, he is He's a very attractive guy, but he is not an attractive character. Like no <laughs> one goes, like no one goes away going, oh, that was so nice of you to do that to Gabriel. <laughs> no, it's horrible. <laughs> but he doesn't speak English. So <laughs> he he just perked up every time he heard Gabriel, he like, oh, oh. <laughs> was so thrilled. I was, and I was so thrilled that he'd not learned English in those 14 years because he wouldn't have been so thrilled. Let's face it. He seems like a sweet man in his way. In his way. Yeah. I mean, obviously there was something there, but mm -hmm. um yeah. And like I said, I would love to share this with him, but it is not worth. Yeah. <laughs> like I am not opening that Pandora's box. So, yeah. When you talked about wanting to record it at some point, do you think um it would be after both of these, like these runs? Because 25 nights, I think it was 25 nights in a row. I mean, that would, uh, that's a lot of practice. And I, I would think like after, you know, doing the repetition would really, you know, oh, not, now you've got it nailed down. I will be an absolute machine after yeah. this. I am going to be like, um, well, you guys know movies much better than I do. Uh, like imagine, well, monkey paw or monkey, monkey man, right? All right, yeah, I just saw that, yeah. Yeah, I'll be, you know, Dev Patel after the trans camp. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna be like just kicking ass, like, um, um, like taking on and giants with my monkey head. Um, so yeah, I I expect that capture to go easy, one take wonder, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be great. Yeah. And, and um, do you have an, a location like in mind, like you would where you'd like to record it or? Um, not really. You know, every time I go to a theater, I look around like, ooh, yeah. maybe here. Um, I mean, we'll probably do it in L.A. because that's where my yeah, world is. is. Yeah. And yeah. So we have our friends that will do favors. Plus, it would be great reactions and uh yeah, well, exactly. I've got, I can guilt all those friends that didn't come the first time. Now it's you easier have to get production in, in there and stuff if you're where everyone is. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? I'll, I'll, we're connected on the socials. I will uh, let folks know um, mm -hmm. if and when, you know, not if, when that capture mm -hmm. is happening. And if people want to, you know, come, like, it's going to be mm -hmm. cool. It'll be, it'll be the show, but there'll be cameras rolling. Yeah. And you does could be immortalized if you're one pick, of the people. Does Netflix get to pick? Because you should be going to Netflix. I've seen other, th honestly, I've seen other things on Netflix and they're fine, but some of them are like, oh, yeah. Um, Not to hate on those people, but sometimes yeah. I'm like, well, I don't know. But well, you thank you for it. saying that. I I know exactly what shows you're talking about, <laughs> and I am I. Ugh, it's so hard. I'm like that could be me. Um, <laughs> yeah. I I think the idea is that we being. AWS Entertainment Group, my producing partners and I, as well as Crack Pepper Productions, uh, who's our investment group, uh, the, 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 the two of us sort of producing entities will create it together and then take it to the Netflix, take it to the Hulu, take it, you know, start a bidding war, let them fight over it, you know, duke it out, monkey man style in a ring um, and with the highest paycheck wins <laughs> but, I like um, it. yeah i mean because let's face it if netflix were to get 
you know, it's, it's not, it's not like Netflix is producing it yet. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, and if they were to produce it, then I would have to be listening to them tell me, oh, cut that joke. Yeah, no. That's true. But yeah, you know, Gabriel, we don't care for him. And I'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they can make those decisions once they, you know, buy it, but no one's paying for it yet. <laughs> yet. Yeah. Yeah. You, and you have to you have make to sure you get, you know, get one shot uh, of a certain individual in the crowd with one tear coming down his eye. <laughs> oh, it, it, oh, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. It sounds like um oh, I was just realized when I saw you last, it was like right before the Oscars. Yeah. Yes. And I and should and I I should have taken Alok's advice. I would have won uh some cash. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no. I didn't even know that was a and thing. Congratulations on the Oscars. Yeah, now I, now I can say I know a, a, a Oscar winning uh producer. Yes, it's true. <laughs> um but you know, you do know how he they won that Oscar. I mean, <laughs> by, by, by creating a fantastic exactly campaign. Exactly. But I swear, it sure didn't hurt the fact that he went to all the various uh, you know, movie theaters where they were screening the the, the nominated shorts, and he would strategize the single <laughs> at that exact moment. I was like. But your commitment is just amazing. I mean, I will cry on stage, but I have a guaranteed audience. Like you're just hoping that somebody in the audience happens to look over at this moment and that that person happens to be a, an Oscar voter. Like, I mean, that's true dedication. Like, I yeah. didn't even do that. I love and it. I'm an Oscar. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So I did not learn to play uh, the song yet for the, on my ukulele, but uh, on your oh. next time, next time I'll, I'll we'll have it down. And right, I forgot we were going to play ukuleles. I mean, yeah. I have mine sort of. Uh, I I don't I haven't learned how to is, play it yet, but I, but, but we'll I need try. To tune mine. Okay, that's the, that's the key. I need to tune mine and then be able to actually. Yeah. Get the I have cheap mine cheap here all the time, even though I don't know how to play it. But I just know the one song, so, <laughs> so I, I'm we can, literally we can, a one-hit wonder. Yeah, we yeah. can all learn okay. the one, and we can. Do I've got my other. tab open, just ready to learn it. That's Aww. one of my Chrome tabs. <laughs> it is a. It's fun. It's cute. It's, it is yeah. very good. Yeah. yeah, I just pretend to play it. I don't know how to play it, but, oh. but no, well, we sounds a little out of tune. Yeah, it's, it's definitely out of tune. <laughs> but we, we'll have it. It'll be all ready to go uh, next time. All good. Fun. Yeah, yeah. So where can people go, Naomi, to see you know where you're going to be and and uh, where they can see American Horror Story? Yeah. Um, well, they can go to the website itself. That's AmericanHorrorStory.com. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, of course, my socials is uh, Naomi W. Grossman. Across all platforms, yeah. look for the blue check mark. Except yeah. on Twitter, because I won't pay for it. I don't blame you. So, all yeah, right. I I didn't put it in the title on YouTube because YouTube is very is uh they last year they they said we were we had pornography and I had to take a nudity course, uh, which was very uh, silly. a nudity course. What did a you course. learn? Uh, well, it was I actually took I'm not I don't know if I was supposed to, but I took screenshots of some of the questions. <laughs> And one of the questions literally made me laugh because it was like, uh, it was something about, they said that someone's name, like Billy, like sees this girl peeing in the snow. And like, he says, oh, that's really hot. And he puts it on YouTube or something. I was like, what the hell? And like, and then you had to answer, like, could he post this on YouTube and why he can or why he can't. He can't. And I actually got it wrong because I was like, Billy can't post this because you can't put urination on YouTube. And like, no. You can, but it has only if it's artistic or uh, educational. And I was like, "There's no way I if I put a, a video up of me peeing." Who needs to learn how to pee anyway? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So just- Naomi, bear right. that in mind as a future opportunity. You can pee on YouTube. There you go. Right. As oh, long yeah. as educational. According to artistic. YouTube, but lucky yeah. you. Oh, that door is open. Flash of videos that I was waiting to post. Then there was all these things like. Like you can tell me that I could show uh, breastfeeding, but you can't show the areola 
of and it was like really Why like specific on all up? these things. I'm like, I'm not going to show you? any of this. It's a horror. It's a horror. Listen, movie. I actually know. I'm I'm acutely aware of how conservative uh, YouTube is. I was busted for. I did this um, Madonna parody <laughs> yes. um, of that. Um, if you remember that song, "Hung Up," she wears like a pink unitard and she like dances in the mirror really sexy mm -hmm. and the joke of course was like she's just too old to be that hot like oh this poor yeah. woman now poor, poor girl this woman um, nowadays poor. so but I, so i was doing like i was basically doing her exact dance but you know a parody of it so i would dance up to the mirror and then i'd slam into it <laughs> Or, you know, I, and I was doing all these, like, insane, you know what? I'll send it to you. Um, yes. It's still out there. It's on, like, I think Funny or Die. But oh, um, if that's even still nice. a thing. I but do believe it is still a thing. I did get busted, like, by Madonna's people, which at the time was kind of almost like a yeah. privilege. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, if Madonna's, uh, you know, <laughs> intimidated by me. Yeah, she would <laughs> deign to check out your video. Actually, I just um, uploaded something today on YouTube, and I checked sexual content because I mm -hmm. it, it it's a it's actually a sizzle reel. It's like a you know trailer for Carnival Knowledge. Oh, and I figure you know I'm talking about sex, like, and last thing I need is somebody going like. You know, it's like I'd rather just be like, no, it, it was a happy ending. You know what that means? <laughs> yeah, sex. Calm down. Like, so, <laughs> like I'd rather just be out there than all of a sudden like accused of being some yeah pornography. Yeah, the, the, go to nudity yeah. school. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, and for like six months we were like under this warning, and then if I if we didn't do anything after after sixty days of doing the. The, uh, the nudity the course that they have removed months. the warning since then. So, but I don't want to put anything up. That, and it, I don't believe their rules anyway because they said if it's art and it was <laughs> it was a horror movie trailer that showed like a millisecond of a nipple and like they were like this is. They said it wasn't art. It was it was trying to entice. And I was like, what is this? It's everything's very vague. <laughs> Good. I think aren't all commercials meant to entice someone? Like I don't even understand what they're trying to say. I mean, I've been to Facebook jail for posting like a side eye with a, a drag queen <laughs> whose breastplate, because of course, you know, their boobs are from China. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Not them, the boobs. Okay. <laughs> These like big rubber balloons yes. uh and they're you know and and i'm kind of doing the side eye mm -hmm. but you know there's a little nipple in there and and yeah i got i was i was there's gotta, all kinds of na like legit nasty stuff on facebook i don't know yeah, youtube that. yeah but nipples are give, give life like <laughs> yep. none of us would be here without a nipple come on like kids gotta eat you know <laughs> i don't know yeah. I guess that we all have our uh, threshold of like what what's okay and what we can handle and there should be like a like you can sign up for a category of this is fine. Can I just be here just being adult and mm -hmm. Yeah, but this one went it wouldn't even let me like say market for adult or anything. It just went right to like your poor post and pornography and I was like wow. oh, whatever. I don't understand, but yeah. Well, I hope your your check in the box <laughs> worked, Naomi. It did. Yeah. Not uh, you. Well, and actually, for the show coming up, I I told them I said strong at language, mm -hmm. and and audience participation. Like, if you're not comfortable with it, like, don't come. <laughs> and if you're too drunk, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little tipsy's okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, that. Actually, our opening night in LA was downright feral. Um, so I shouldn't be talking shit about Boston <laughs> audiences because this first one in LA, I'm telling you, well, our the problem was we served in the in the um, reception. These I had these weed drinks donated to me, so we were basically getting this, the audience stoned and then you know letting them sit through this. It was absolute it was it was like a gladiator oh, no. people were like 
rooting for me. I mean, they were really like involved, like in a way where I was like, it's theater. <laughs> like, Does that get distracting if people, I mean, one guy I could see be especially yeah, distracting. No, he but... really was, but um, I mean, no, it's a, a yes and no. And, you know, it's part of it. You yeah. got to be ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The difference between film and TV and theater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do you get energy from that? Yeah, when people are really excited. Yeah, do. the Boston crowd is a little like it was awkwardly Bostonian. Oh, really? Like stiff Bostonians. Yeah, when we went to the Evil Dead thing, it was still kind of stiffly Bostonian. Interesting. You're literally <laughs> paying to be like doused in fake blood, and yet we're going to be uptight about it. Yeah, that's a yeah. little odd. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. So yeah. it's a blend. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I will say, like, I just did some film uh acting, and it, it was so it was such a tease to like yeah. do it in maybe two or three takes and you're done. Yeah. Uh, you'll yeah. never do it again. You'll you you'll you'll see yeah. it maybe in a year on the screen, and that's it whereas like this this show it's like a part of me it's it's yeah. been my life for like the last since the pandemic yeah during the pandemic so uh when you you know just to like like and but that's part of the, why i love it so much is it's like i this living breathing thing that it's different every night and i you know and i tweak it and i i i, I finesse it and 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 yet you just don't have that luxury, you know, in film and yeah. TV. Um, I just went to this uh, panel for a, a movie. It was the same director as The Exorcist. Oh, uh, William Friedkin? Yeah, who You're, just died, yeah. I guess. Oh. Um, but he literally, this movie starring um, Keanu, no, what am I saying? Kiefer Sutherland. Yes. He talked about how they did it mostly in one take. Wow. And it's literally like a law drama. So they're just doing all this like uh, endless talking mm -hmm. on the witness stand. And I can't imagine like doing all that work, preparing, and then getting to do it once. <laughs> like it's over. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess, you know, when the director's 87, oh, yeah. you better get in. have time. <laughs> he may not stick around for a second take, right? Make the Pick up the pace, folks. Right. He wants to edit the thing, too. You know, <laughs> let's get it done. So, I don't know. <laughs> do you think you'll bring more theater into your world? Not even just your own, but do you think you'll perform more on stage? I hope so. I mean, yeah. yeah I mean, I would love to be on Broadway or, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I have a fourth solo show in me, too. You know, I, yeah, I mean, I just... I just want to do what I love, you know, <laughs> whether the, I, I'm, I'm not picky about the medium. I mean, there's things that I love about film and television, especially like, mm -hmm. you know, I am kind of a horror for an, an audience. And so um, I much prefer ha being on all the televisions in all of America and all over the world uh, mm -hmm. than in this one stage in Boston. But at the same time, like I said, there's, it's, it's there's it's really cathartic to go through that journey through the yeah. course of a night. Whereas, let's face it, you know, sometimes I'll sit in a bit in a makeup chair for all day only to give one grunt, or you know, <laughs> and you and don't have the you don't have the immediate reaction to it. No, yeah. and you're, you're shooting out of order and like, yeah, where am I now? What do I think? What do I say? Oh, 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 I. Oh, you were rolling? Oh, oh, it's done. Oh, we're wrap. It's lunch. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, you don't know, you know what the audience thinks of it until, you know, no, weeks and, or and months the, or years editor, later. Yeah. And, and you could have given the greatest performance of your life. And if the editor doesn't like you, <laughs> oh. you know what I mean? He doesn't no, know no. what they're doing. Like, yeah. It's true. Yeah, I, mean, I guess that's true. That's where it's made, you know? Yeah. Mm. Seen it happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so interesting. Have, yeah, we can't talk about it, but you have something exciting coming up, which we're all uh, interested in. I do, I do. You will be. I'm sorry. I, nah. Yeah. 
No, just this let is, us this know when you can do the big reveal. Yeah. But I, yeah. I did. I, I started it. I started it since we um, oh, saw each other last. Oh, that's great. Uh, although I'm not done, I got to go back for pickups. Awesome. So that'll be fun. And I, you know, I've never done anything this big before. So I'm anxious to see. Um, you know, I don't know how long these things take. I think it'll be probably the yet end of the year, if not next year, before we actually see it. But we will see it. <laughs> awesome. Like, when do you get the green light to to tell to us what it is? It, yeah. Even if you don't go into detail. When will I get the green light to talk about it? Even if it's just to say this is what I'm doing, and I'm really excited. That's a good question. Um. um You know, I I don't know. I maybe I'll. I would say once the. Tr I mean, without like c contacting a publicist and asking them, and they would give mm -hmm. me the actual answer. Mm -hmm. I would say when the trailer comes out, and if you see my face, <laughs> then we know. Hey. <laughs> there she is. Hey, that's that's, that's what she was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's so exciting. I'd always <laughs> rather be like safe about these things. Yeah. Also, we don't know. Again. Maybe I pissed off the editor. Like, I don't want to talk about it unless I know I'm, you know, in it. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I feel confident though. Like I said, I will. I have not. Well, I don't know about the editor, but I do know I, I wowed the director, cinematographer. So, um, thus far, I am. I'm definitely in it. And like I said, you will definitely see it. Like, you know, so much of the you know kind of no budget low budget movies that i was cast in after american horror story i mean half the time i was just praying it never got seen you know oh. <laughs> so <laughs> the fact that it's like this is one that i actually want to get you know yeah. i want people to see and i know that they will they don't need me like it's so that's that's exciting they chose you yeah. even if you think that they don't need you they chose you so that's, yeah, that's and you know awesome. how they chose me from this show. I was trying to point at American Horror Story. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I'm the worst that's awesome. Vanna, Vanna White ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but uh, yeah, people, um, the the casting saw the show in New Mexico of all places. Oh, wild! Oh, wow! I know. Yeah, who knew? You know, you think you have to go to like L.A. or New York? No. Nope. Yeah. Tiny mm -hmm. rural town in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hmm. but it's crazy. I mean, then again, there's a lot of production there right now. So no. it's, uh, yeah. 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 No, I mean, it's like, if I were going to theater school now, I'd probably be like, hmm, where should I go? Like Atlanta, New I Orleans? Was, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I that's like something exactly that there's the a real push. That there's a real push in New Mexico. I th must have seen. I like think it was after like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. This is something I saw recently Probably. that was they're really welcoming. The community wants to be a film community. That's what they want to grow. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's uh, they're offering forty percent tax incentives right now. Wow. So we can like get 40% of your money back. Like, yes. uh, yeah. yeah. No and the fact that it's going to, it's cheaper to live. It's cheaper to p put people up, cheaper, cheaper to do everything. So and it's not that far away. If someone happened, if someone happened to live in LA or something that they, can no, I mean, I was flying out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it looks like so many places, like, if you, it looks like the Wild West. It looks like yeah. Afghanistan. It looks like mm -hmm. you can, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't look like New York City, but that's what sound stages are for, you know? <laughs> yeah. So what? it's crazy. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, and welcome. yes, you will be, um, well, you're going to see that trailer. And the minute you see my mug, you'll um, so tell me back. Yeah, well, you're always welcome back. But yeah, we'll oh, definitely yeah. have to have you back for this. No, but you know, we'll have something new to talk about. Yeah, yeah. of course. Really? Yeah. Well, good, good, very good. well, I hope this was interesting. It was. It's great. Yeah. I hadn't even hadn't seen American Horror Story. Um, if anything, hopefully, like I said, if they're anywhere near my high city or across the pond, maybe they'll, you know, come see me over the next couple months. Yeah. Yeah, I would highly you recommend all it. Be, well, yeah, sure. it is amazing. Oh. You can see Naomi's personality. 
here with us now and you get this amazing, incredible story. Like I said, there's so many different Elliot, um, Ele Elliot's, so many different elements. This is a performance. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay. And we had a great time hanging out afterwards. We had a lot of fun. Oh, yes, we did. And then you had a whole, you went on a bender. You were at oh, the. Oh, yeah, we went to the casino. casino. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We yeah. did. Yeah. So like, really I just to to that me. winning Oscar ticket. <laughs> I had one contribution and you didn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that is that is very true, though. We would have done better if we just bet on the. Uh, on the, on the, uh, I didn't awesome. know. Next time, well, next time. <laughs> mm -hmm. that next is time. Uh, a low superpower. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, it's oh. it's the one thing. It's the one thing he excels at. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Poor guy. He has, he has special skills. But that one is especially special. <laughs> I'm sure he'll laugh at that. He's a good guy. Uh, oh. There's a few questions, but Lord Gary wants to know. What age did Naomi start acting and what was her first feature film? Mm. Um, started acting in the womb. Well, <laughs> that doesn't really count. Um, you know, my first SAG gig was Father Darling Mysteries, which you guys saw in the show. Um, uh, and that was when I was 15. Um, I mean, I'd done like you know, a lot of like children's theater and regional commercials and, um, you know, kind of just anything and everything that was coming out of Denver. Um, and, you know, like I said, if you were to ask my first grade crush, like, you know, <laughs> what Naomi's doing right now, I mean, obviously with Facebook and every, we know what each mm -hmm. other are having for breakfast, but um, <laughs> even without, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, he would have said like, oh, she's an actress for somewhere. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, and so I would say, you know, from, I don't know, what, what's after conception? Like embryo? embryo oh, after Asian. conception? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's all after conception. But yeah, I mean, it's I, it's hard to nail down that exact moment. Fetal star. Yeah, I was a fetal star. <laughs> Good child um, acting if a fetal actor. Yeah, yeah. they'd tr take the picture and you'd <laughs> ugliest fetus on, <laughs> on television. No, um, my first feature film was um, oh my gosh, you know what? Right after American Horror Story, I was cast in a movie that you guys might have seen because you see all the horror movies. Uh, it was called The Chair. The chair. Hmm, I don't know sure. if I have seen it. Don't it, see it. Are it you saying have. like avoid I mean, it? I don't. I'm not. I'm not this hardcore horror fan. Yeah. Okay. So I'm kind of a poser. I love <laughs> horror because horror loves me. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if y'all didn't love me, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> um, no. But like, I I love. I don't know. Like Borat's my favorite movie. Oh, you know? I'm a big fan yeah, myself. With that. Yeah. Okay. Um. No, but uh, th this was sort of a kind of slasher porn. Like it was just wasn't terribly. It's got you know, a cool poster. Sure. Yeah, you know, red and black. Oh, it's uh, directed by Chad Farron, who we just had on the show a few weeks ago. Uh, oh, oh shit! No. Okay, <laughs> don't say I said anything. We'll never tell. <laughs> yeah, Roddy Piper's last film. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Did we see? Oh. That? Did we see that at that convention? Maybe not. No, we saw wrestlers but, versus uh, zombies. What was so? Was I don't know how much time you were around him, but he's definitely has a reputation of being challenging. Mm. So uh, I mean, he died right after, so I yeah. can't speak to that. But uh, no, you know what? We never had. We weren't on set together, so I don't. I couldn't. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't want to speak ill of the dead. Um, yeah. I already live in a haunted house, so. No. This what are your the, haunted experiences? Remember, I talk about my uh, my haunted condo. Ah, yes. Yeah, these are the lights that sometimes flash. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. But you're comfortable with the spirits. Oh yeah. With the spirits of cool people. He's a friendly ghost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters. <laughs> We're good. We're good together. And he's my <laughs> muse. Again, he gets written about too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does he have any issues being uh, involved in any of your uh, projects? If you if you talk about the ghost, 
Um, he doesn't understand English, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I I definitely remember like feeling him when I was mm. when I was writing, especially about him, uh, because again, he is a, a he's a famous ghost. Yes, uh, uh, Peter Lawford. Um, this would be a great moment for like. An electrical yeah, if the lights went yeah. out. Or, yeah. He was like living yeah. it up in your space, right? And this is yeah. part of it. Yeah. So I, I, but I, so I, yes, there's definitely been like moments where I was like, oh, that was Peter Lawford. Mm -hmm. And then there's other moments that I'm like, oh, that, that was an earthquake. <laughs> they feel very similar, actually. Like I forget <laughs> we're in like earthquake yeah. country and it, they actually happen a lot more often than you realize yeah um, but my first thought is always paranormal personally mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm infinitely more afraid of that than i am you know some tremors but what is your fear of the paranormal oh well i don't really fear peter because like i said mm -hmm. i think we have a really you know good him. thing going mm -hmm. but i would say of all the like horror tropes yes ghosts are the one that i definitely believe in mm -hmm. like like a loke can talk forever about aliens and it's Alien ridiculous theory. like and i i can't i can't with that <laughs> but like and yet he thinks that me talking about ghosts is absurd like i'm like <laughs> what how is one worse or less ridiculous <laughs> than the other like you're literally talking about little green men he's like no but nasa and like he has like <laughs> So, you know, I don't know. But, <laughs> yeah, I don't, it don't really, it doesn't, like I said, I, I don't want you to think I'm spend, you know. No. <laughs> people have the, I, you know, these things come up. You're in this place. You had your experience. You, you've you had a life. And people mm -hmm. have these, these things. Yeah. And I think, like I said, it's just a matter of, like, for example, mm -hmm. in uh, American Horror Story, uh, of all the seasons, Murder House, by far the scariest. Maybe because it's about ghosts. Maybe because I wasn't involved yet. And I didn't realize, I didn't know how the sausage was made. You know, I didn't know <laughs> there's actually a dude holding a cable one foot off the screen, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that season was truly terrifying to me because I just didn't see all the, you know, the yeah. smoke and mirrors. Yeah. You're in the audience. Or maybe it's a really terrifying show yeah. about ghosts. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. You can't like hide from ghosts. If you've got a ghost, they're kind of there. You can yeah. have some exorcism or something like that. But if you got a ghost and it doesn't like you. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the well, editor. If he doesn't like you. Yeah. Right. Good luck. Yeah, at least you don't have like the ghost of an editor. Oh wow! Now that's a horror like movie that. in its own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's true. Mm. <laughs> Ghost editor and, that haunts your projects. Yeah, it's like really great. That sounds like a good out. short yeah. film or something. You know? Oh my god, I love that. It always chooses the worst. Take it. Take it's yours. <laughs> yeah, run with that. No, oh, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Very inside Hollywood ghost story. Uh, yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Mm. Fun. I like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, it's always uh, it's yeah, always a pleasure so talking much. with you oh, and seeing you, you. You're always uh, happy and uh, puts a smile on everyone's face. Oh, sure, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, we were happy. Thank you again for having me, and uh, I will see you next time. I'm sure. Yes. Yes. Right. Wonderful! Go Can't wait to see this trailer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, sure. we'll keep our eyes out. Yeah. Oh, and I'll send you the Madonna. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Well, yeah. Really to see is this something yeah. you if this is something somewhere, do you want us to share it? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Madonna All right. won't. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No, for sure. For sure. All right. All right. All right. Very good. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, All right. Thank thanks, so guys. Yeah. Bye. 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 All right. Well, that was amazing. That She's was so tremendous. Yeah. She's so talented. I love her. Yep, she rocks. Yeah. Um, I just want to throw us up there. Lord wants to know what is everyone's favorite scary movie. Mm, oh. It's so tough. It's like I know it is horror people. Come on, guys. If someone was to ask Pick any one of, of your you, favorite you children, you know. Hey. 
I know. And there's yeah. different kinds of, there's yeah. like comedy horror and there's, you know, psychological horror. Well, he didn't say horror. He did say scary. All right. Scary. scary. Okay. So like some mm. of the stuff that I would normally pick is not necessarily, not necessarily scary. That's so. Oh, that's true. That's true. Scary. What would be my favorite? The Japanese, scary? or I should say the um, East Asian horror movies, because now I've grown past Japan. I've expanded into East Asia. Those scare the shit out of me. And it's kind of playing off of Naomi. It's like haunted things. It's. Yeah, a lot of the times, yep. Yes, there's haunted. They have a things. whole different take on their like ghosts and things, you know. Yes. At least like the Korean stuff and all that. Yeah, you know. We've seen a, a, some pretty good stuff in the theater. Oh yeah. Um, we just saw one that was pretty good, and that stuff okay. just freaks me out. Not only will they haunt you in your place, but you could come in and basically get infected and carry that spirit back with you anywhere you go. That's scary. Yep. <laughs> That is spooky stuff. Yeah. They do a great job of being terrifying. Even the things that are kind of goofy that I will up and down. x -tay is awesome. It's funny. It's a dead woman who's growing hair and growing hair and growing hair. And this hair obsessed man gets it and then is selling it as hair extensions, this whole thing. And uh, even though it's kind of goofy, it's also scary like the woman that's growing hair is scary there's scary things that happen in it i love it love it so going with that one go with that i'll just go with x day i love it it's my east asian movie highlight right now so that's that'll be my recommendation going with one that always scared me like certain parts of it even now like i'll watch it and there's certain parts that spook me out is, uh, um, yeah, okay. Now I can't remember it, but, you know, <laughs> what it's happened? all good. Neil, what about <laughs> yours? I'm going to say Phantasm, because the tall man is one of the few things that scared me as a kid. That tall man and uh, the trailer of Magic, not necessarily the movie Magic, but yeah. the trailer of Magic does. But uh, as a movie, I'm going to say Phantasm. I like that. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to go with Hell House. That's what uh, the movie oh, I was Hell thinking House. about. There's certain Hell House parts is that older, that just, isn't it? Yeah, it's Roddy McDowell. It's uh, oh. 1970. It's a great Richard. Yeah. I love it. And I'm not I'm not normally in, big into the um, Haunted House movies, but I, yeah. I love that. really movie. good. There's certain bits in that that really spook me out. I dig it. And so really as far as scary movie. movies go, that's that's my choice. There's a great Mexican horror movie that's coming to uh, Netflix, I believe disappear completely i got to see it because i was supposed to interview the director and then they change it the that day of the inter but anyway i won't say anything about about the movie or him because i don't think it had anything to do with him the the it was you know whoever set up but movie is great and uh -huh. it's and i'm not someone who's normally scared or anything this is a legit scary movie and there's a lot of great uh, like Latin horror stuff coming out, and so I yeah. would recommend Disappear completely. Really yeah. sweet. It might have been out there before. I think it's just getting its space. Yeah, yeah. It's been. You know? It's. Uh, yeah, I think it played festivals and stuff. So. Yeah, which is amazing. Yeah. I've I seen... might reach out to the director himself and see if we can get him on because. Yeah, you never know. That's I think really is a good strategy. Just reach out, and if they're in it, if they're into it, they take it, and if not. So be really cool. It's about a guy gets cursed, um, and he loses his senses. What each wow. a different sense each day. Wow, and that would be uh, so awful. Yeah, it's a, it's a great movie. It's really wow. well acted. There's great jump scares. I know some people. It's really weird. I think. Well, anyway, I'll get to that in the jump scares in one second. But and the ending is a horrific ending and very well done. But the um. Jump scare thing, I want to say real quick, because it used to be people said, you know, they don't like a movie that's solely about jump scares. And I agree with that. Yeah. But it seems like some people have taken that to any time there's a jump scare in a movie, that's a negative. And I think that's very silly. Mm -hmm. I saw it recently, actually, uh, someone talking about uh, the first Omen. And that was one of the negatives. Yeah, I that it had that. A, that it that had was, jump that was, I brought that up, that there was a lot of 
jump scares that were actually jump scares that made sense. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, a cat just right. Ow! Or or something goofy. It's like at one point, this the uh lead character has a friend, and it's like the friend actually is like, wow, because friends do that. Friends will be like you'll be like doing your thing and someone will be like, Wah! so it played like this is a very natural kind of jump scare where they filmed yeah. it. And I met someone that... was saying as a negative that the movie had jump scares. And it's like, it's not a negative that a movie has jump scares. I think that's kind of the silly. Like, yeah, you're you're muted. Troy can't hear you. He is. I can't. He's not him. muted on our side. So it must be something up with your tech. Yeah, we can't hear you, though. Are you unplugged? Mm -mm. Did your cat unplug you? You you have been disconnected. Oh, now that put Alex. you off because you're not you're not muted through the program. There's something is up with your technology. Yeah. Hmm. That cat, the black cat, <laughs> full of mischief. Cat did that the, the other week when he left early. It actually unplugged his computer. But anyway, uh, wanting, you this is a smart cat and wants attention. Like, this is enough true. of that show. Very true. Hell with that. I have a see Troy, you can hear us though, right? Well, that's that's something. We got that. Well, we even saw he wrote a uh, warlock. <laughs> you can sign. Oh, you can write stuff in the chat. Yeah, he did. Damn war nice. warlock has unplugged him. That's an awesome name. Oh, Good well, it's great to have you, Troy. Yeah, we will talk to you soon, Troy. The, this this trio here, we're putting together <laughs> our first movie together. He's Arbor Day. I laugh. Troy's doing a lot of work <laughs> on it. Which keeps me uh, it keeps me in line, so it has to be done. Okay, yeah, you have to kick Neil's about. ass when he starts being a bum. You're but no, you're the, the, uh, lots of ideas. I actually told Troy today that uh, maybe we'll make it into a feature. I don't know, but we'll wait and see. I don't know. If everything's all together, I'm not really sure if it if it would actually cost much more just to do a feature. But we'll see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I've heard some good ideas about this Arbor Day thing. Yes. And every time something else comes up, I have another idea. So anyway, yeah. it, it, it and not good ideas, not just like something that does. Huh? You're going to have a you're going to have to get someone else to edit it. You cannot edit this. Yeah, actually, yeah. Some, some people have offered help. So I think that's wise. Which is very nice. Yeah. So anyway, someone you trust who has the same sense of humor as you. Well, but... that that is an issue because it has a peculiar sense of humor. So yeah, you gotta have your own. You gotta find that special blend that can. What do they call it? Killing your babies. Right. Yeah, right. you can't do that. You can't. No, I could. No, I could. But I would like it. I would like <laughs> you it just to be like three hours long. No, it can't be because I want it. I would like it if it was a feature. I would like it to be short feature, like maybe seventy five minutes or something. Mm -hmm. You can't because I think uh, silly comedy no, should be too long. Do I steer you wrong ever? I mean, sometimes, but no, not for yeah! part. You got a sweet haircut and a kilt. Yeah, I don't have. Well, I do have the kilt still, but it's yeah. too big. I would like to get a new one. I do like the kilt. Utility kilt rule. I am so pro kilt. Yeah, pro kilt. It's awesome. Get out there and do your thing. Be free. Yeah. Because I noticed. Scary. I noticed Troy opened his second Fago. I gave him two of my four Fago, so he drank. I just drank a little bit of mine. It's very good, but I do not want to drink. Only you brought it when we visited on Sunday. Yeah, I didn't think about it. So thoughtful. it's re it is. I'll admit it's very good. It just tastes like I'm drinking I cotton candy. I love that flavor. So much. I do too. It's it is very good. It, it is excellent. It's better. Than I expect. I expect to be very syrupy, like Troy said, but it's not. It's good. Coast totally. All of y'all get kilts. I don't need to see what's underneath them, but get some kilts, and we will post them in the group. Perhaps yeah, yeah, even the feature club. them in a the show. Coast, Perhaps did you join the that. Facebook group? I know you're back. But we on could Facebook. like have our segment on this of like the cool kilts. The key yeah, the kilt it, it club. Be the cool kilt clan. That's yeah, not whoa. Good. Yeah, yeah. Cool kilt. Yeah, I don't know, know if Coast wants part that. of the. Uh, even though the... it would be C, it'd be C's. <laughs> right, right. C K C. No, that's not gonna fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you definitely don't good. spell cool. I was cool thinking it would be like ICP. Right. But definitely no, don't spell I cool. With the K. That idea. <laughs> withdraw. We there's have a, come up there's with a place different. I probably shouldn't even say the name, Cool Cone Creamery. Um on and it and they oh spell all of it with a K. And it's like, what are you guys thinking? Oh dear. <laughs> or maybe I it's on purpose. To. I don't know. Yes, he's on, yes, there's a without your head page. I'm coach. sharing it in the chat over here. You got to get over so there, my anyone, friend, my buddy, my pal. Anyone who wants to join the Facebook group, we would love it. Mm -hmm. um, you you see all the what's going on. Yeah, no, none of that goes. We're, I withdraw. That was a really bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> At first it sounded cool. And then it was yeah. like, oh shit, that's something is, else. For the audio something people else. out there, it is facebook.com slash group slash without your head horror. Because I do know there's uh which is cool if you like to watch, enjoy the show any way you you uh you choose, but there there are people who prefer to just listen. I don't think it's that they prefer to listen and not see us, it's that they prefer the the platforms <laughs> of uh of audio like yeah the there's Apple a lot of stuff out there stuff. but you are missing out with the audio i get that there are times and places where you can't watch like if you're at work or whatever right, right. you want to like drown out the workspace yes maybe listen but so but you miss all of our we're no naomi grossman but you do miss our mm. physical comedy she inspired me honestly i feel energized by her energy yeah Neil's looking down. I agree. And he's like, I'm so energetic. No, I, I was. Uh, there's something important going on about our movie. So, mm. um, I'll tell you off here. But the anyway, the um, it doesn't have to do with a certain person, does it? Yes. Stop it. You probably, you probably have an idea. So, um, severed oh limbs. God. Uh, timeline is coming up this uh weekend i can't think anymore because i'm thinking how awesome this probably is no no it's a bad thing it's a bad negative oh thing. it's a negative thing so maybe it's not the person i thought you you i thought you no i thought it was a positive thing no it's not a positive thing. a negative like mean to you thing or just not going to work not out? mean to me necessarily but it's going to be mean to the it's it's bad it's not good yikes Okay. Uh, I'll so, prepare myself. Is it me? It's not my not 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 Arbor Day. Not Arbor Day. Oh, a movie that exists. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Huh. Well, okay. Yeah. Oh, I might know what this is. Yeah. I think I know what this is. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I'm on board with one of those people. Anyway, yeah. we've got some. Some behind the scenes drama that we are not going to be involved in. So just forget we said anything. Don't don't worry. Don't sweat it. Right, Everything's right. cool. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah, fine. yeah we're, good. we're good. So uh severed limbs, the deadline is this weekend. I believe it's Saturday. So get Ooh. your get your shorts in, get your trailers in. A whole bunch came in this week when I announced that there was three days left. I thought you were going to say get your shit together. You can do that too. Even, get your shit important. together, folks. Don't be, don't be rude to Neilio. He puts a lot of work into this. Like a lot, a lot, a lot. He's not making money off of it. So if you've got something, please don't be like, well, after the fact. Get it to this man so he can get his shit done and bring all this wonderfulness to, to all of us. Because he does work really hard. I appreciate so it. Be nice. Be respectful, mm -hmm. please. I've said uh, let's see here. Um, well, awesome coast. Yay, coast joined. Coast just joined. That's awesome. why I just saw someone posted, uh, uh, yeah, Adam Oates posted an autographed photo of me that they got in uh, really? year 2020. Dang. Which is very cool. We need to get wow. some new, uh, or no, 2015. Whoa. Dang. That's almost 10 years old. Yeah, and? that's a collector's item. You could probably go put that on eBay. And you put things on eBay. I don't even nothing. understand how they sell, but they do. Old shirts full of junk. So maybe yeah, you're I like, 
I, uh, financial I, miracle. I was, gonna, I was gonna sell the uh well I was gonna wear my ICP uh jersey, but I sold it on eBay. Cause it, it's also way too big for me. But I did have an I did have two different ICP. I had an ICP hockey jersey and an ICP football jersey. I sold them both. Are you the into game. ICP ever? A little bit. I like them and then the uh, wrestling. I, yeah, but I know the music. I mean, I mean, I don't have any of their albums or anything, but and then uh, I mentioned there. So we had uh, Violent J on the show, and mm-hmm. he did th- that. Was going to happen. I was going to. I don't know. I never knew exactly what they wanted me to do. <laughs> like if I was going to be a manager, because <laughs> at the time I was, I did local commentary, uh, and I wore all the red, white, and blue stuff, and oh, then Violent. Weird. They wanted me to come out as Uncle Slam Jackie. Do you have a picture of that available for people I to do. see? What I your your it. past look before I said cut your hair, you hippie, and stop wearing. Well, I didn't always. Mask. I didn't know. I didn't wear always wear this. this. I didn't always wear red, white, and blue uh, stuff like this. But and so this was at a local uh, wrestling. I. Uh, that is doing commentary. Uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake was on this show. That's awesome. Oh, no, he wasn't. He was. I'm sorry. Uh-oh. It was uh, Just Incredible and Spike Dudley. The year before was uh, Brutus Shaw. the Barber Beefcake. Oh, sweet. I was a little weirded out I by Brutus the Barber Beefcake because he was like an older guy and he yeah. had both his nipples pierced. And it's just, it was, and he's just standing there with no shirt on. I guess, I mean, even oh. outside the rest, and I was just like, I don't know what's going on. Plus, it was a little weird. So I'm doing the commentary, and the guy running the show, because this is, this is a part of wrestling, is you're supposed to shake everyone's hand, and that's fine. But he actually brought me into the dressing room, uh, like the locker room. And so it's like all people in various stage of undress and stuff, and I'm supposed to go around and introduce myself to everybody. And I, I'm wearing like a, a suit, a red, white, and blue suit, and other people either have their wrestling tights on or like their like jock strap, and I've got to go and say, hey, I'm whatever. Maybe like Testing a, you. Some of them were tapping. Some of them were just like, who cares? Whatever. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I had a suit. I'm like, does it? I was holding off on my comments about a suit. your suit. It's a suit. It's a red shiny jet shirt with a tie. And do you see that man audience? Can you it's believe that's rocking. a man? It's a pretty good look. Oh my god! I still have the hat and the tie. Look how far you've come. <laughs> yeah, that means a little, might be a little bit better. Look. Yes. <laughs> it's not like you're not amazing, because you are, of course. And I think you've grown as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, we've got over 20. Um, I can grab them if you want. What? 20 what? The, uh, the, the, every, all the uh, things that were... Um, they're going to be at severed limbs, but it would probably take a while to go over. We'll do that another time. We only got a half hour here. Yeah. Yes. Let's see. Taboo. Here. We're being asked a question by coast down here. Okay. Hold real quick. Here is the, um, the ICP hockey Jersey. See, even there you've made a little, you're a little bit on the, in the right direction. Did I know you then? No. I like that hat. It's pretty sweet. That is a really nice hat. I probably yeah. have that somewhere. Look at Troy. My goodness. <laughs> He's a very trimmed beard. Yeah, yeah. Very you brown know. hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, brown hair, trimmed beard. Anyway. It's a cool jersey. Mm-hmm. Is it still taboo for a man to get a tattoo above his butt? So th- I believe that is known as the tramp stamp. It is. It is. I guess it would depend on who they are. Like, what is their actual personality like? If they have other tattoos. It's hard to say what's taboo, to be honest. Like, I think that's a cultural question. There are some places that everybody's like, who gives a shit? Get your tattoos. And some places are going to be like, 
and give you a hard time. Who is so who that? are you wondering about is going to pass that whatever test? I'm trying to People remember. People are going to respect the... it. I'm trying to remember this yeah. guy's name. Lance Ar Lance Archer. Um, I was going to say Lance Armstrong. So you could go. This is this is on in your head. But years ago, mm -hmm. we interviewed Lance Archer when he was in TNA wrestling. Total nonstop. Oh my goodness, that was. And long. I asked about his tramp stamp, which he was not pleased with me asking about. He then did later you call it that. I did. He he later changed. He covered it up and made it a much bigger tattoo. And I've always wondered, and we've joked a few times on the show over the years, if if it's because I brought it up on the podcast. I bet you are not the only person that brought it up. Probably not. But he he oh. he was not too happy. No. He's a good guy though. So Coast is is commenting on that. So who is this person? Yeah, him. Can Lance you find Archer. Him yeah, I'm, the rest I'm, of us? I'm I'm gonna find a picture of um, I can't really find. So now he's got like a full back tattoo. It like connected everything, and he Who covered the it. Guy but... Brock Lesnar that has like the big penis sword on. Yeah, his that's chest? the worst. That looks oh so my stupid. god! He was Lance Hoyt though at the time. Lance Hoyt. Mm -hmm. Let me. I'll try to uh, find uh, Lance Hoyt. I don't think I can find a picture of the of the tattoo. No way. It sounds like it's a very popular item to give him shit about, so. Let me find hmm. Lance Hoyt. I could, I see, oh, here we go. Why does it have an, I don't know why this one's got. <laughs> Here's some a... Reddit. <laughs> the Reddit is Lance Archer Tramp Stamp Finally Forgotten from four <laughs> years ago. Yeah, I got a picture right here, man. All right. Well, see, he used to have a trend that now he's like made it into first. He made it into a giant just blotch, basically. And then he uh, he made it into like a full bot back tattoo. So I found some rock and rave infection. That doesn't sound good at all. It sounds like a venereal disease. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I got the case of the rock and rave infection. This is so here's an up close of uh, when, when he had the tramp oh, stamp. Oh man, it's yeah, not a great, not thing. a great idea. You really, no, not... I mean, it's it's up to a person if you want to accentuate your ass. Sure, I also you want wonder to call how attention. Where... Okay, where does that go? Looks like it continues down past On the tights. Cheeks. Yeah, so what's going on there is what I'm wondering. It's got cheeks. It's and now he, this is what like, looks like currently. Oh. So now he he basically yeah. blotched that he whole thing out. Or better tattoos. I wonder that looking at UFC, it's like, can't... And at all sports, it's like, can you not afford a better tattoo? Come on hmm. now. Come Never on. Never mind. That's good, I guess. I don't know. It's not. <laughs> In my opinion, I don't mean to insult people out there with tattoos that are like that, but having been a tattoo person of actually doing tattoos, you could do better. Yeah, and it's weird because Brock Lesnar had a great big skull thing on his back, which, like, you know, it was fine. Whatever. But then he got that stupid, like, just dagger in the front, and it does not look Penis good. in the front. Yeah. Not a good look. What? He, maybe he, tell that to he his still face. has it though, right? He still has it. It's he still like, like it. front and center. Yeah, he must like so it. I guess he loves it. Good for if, him. If we would do battle, it's it's a fair fight because both of us had diverticulitis surgery. Both me and Brock Lesnar. So. Yeah, I'm sure that would go in your favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would work out. Ah, oh, Coast. You know, um... I'm not sure because it was pretty new at the time getting tattoos with white ink was something that was happening. So I don't know what happened with that because that was around the time that I exited. Oh, host. Oh, man. That sucks. What would you get, Coast? 
what would you want besides the obvious of without your head tattoo? But um, <laughs> if I ever got, I probably will never get tattoos. But if it would, it'd probably be like the Universal Mayor Monsters. Well, Mayor McCheese. Uh, I think oh, one dude, off, yeah. one sleeve U Universal Monsters, and the other sleeve it's it's um like food mascot. So it's uh Boo Berry and Mayor McCheese. And it's it's the it's the dichotomy of, of nasty Neil. I would love to look stuff. up white ink because I've just googled it, and uh, I mean, I think it's pretty cool. It ends up going with shading, like you can do, uh, like a traditional color tattoo, and use that as like highlight. Well, he said he would he would like bright stuff like Pikachu and Mario World. I wonder, though, if you could, because this was something I did want to try, is lay down white, like have like a layer of white tattoo, heal it, and then try to go over it with color. And maybe like that would base layer, work. Like if you're painting something? Yeah, like exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's something I wish I could have tried. Because I think it could happen. Yeah. Oh, man. It's me, Mario. Tomatoes, sweet. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Attack. I don't think we've ever had Attack of the Killer Tomatoes guest on the show. Maybe we should look into that. Figure it out, man. George Clooney Kentucky is in part two. <laughs> what if we reach yeah. out to George Clooney and be like, will you do Attack of the Killer Tomatoes 2 interview with us? He might. He's pretty cool. Yeah, he the interviews I've seen of him, he seems like an all right guy. I agree, and he he said something I've quoted many times uh, in the interview I saw with him, and he said he does movies like Ocean's 12, the sequel to Ocean's 11, so he could make movies like Quiz Show. Yes. He does these giant movies where he gets paid a fortune so he can make these, these independent films that he wants to make. And I like that. Skin starts turning green, Coast. What? Why did it turn green? I don't know. Why? I just saw a picture of someone two years later, and, and it looks good. It looks... I don't know. Oh. Google it. So, <laughs> so we've got a lot of friends out there. and the, So, Arrow. We love Arrow. Check out Arrow Streaming. We're going to get some people. We're going to get start getting people on from that, like, uh, on the regular. Uh, New Village Video we love. And now the fine folks um, from Severin Films. Has sent us a bunch of stuff. Oh, nice! Very cool. Yeah, we need our 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 friend from Arrow on. Yeah. Oh, sweet. So we've got the Devil's Honey. This is a Lucio Fulci film. Oh, cool! A sleazy masterpiece. I love that. Now that uh, sounds wait, great. lift that up a little bit because you can't. The way you were holding it, you can't see like that's. Yeah. Huh? It's like a dog collar. Hmm. Easy masterpiece, the devil's honey. Hmm. Well, it actually has a dog on here, so I don't know what the hell's going on. Yikes. Oh dear. Maybe she turns into a werewolf. Maybe she's a werewolf. That's what I'm gonna go with. Because I don't think they could give us other things. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, that's no, no, the shit tattoos turn greenish. The old school inks. That's the thing. If you're seeing a tattoo after decades, the technology is not the same. So inks are higher quality. You have to have aftercare. Like putting, if you have tattoos exposed to the sun, you have to make sure you put sunblock on them. It does take it like it does take care to have a tattoo stay crisp. But but you can leave it and not. But the green ink, that's like. That's not a thing anymore. I get what you're saying, but that's not. Like some of them were turned kind of like a navy blue. There's a, it's a whole new Oh, world. that's like uh I remember like Harley Race his yeah. but his he had his tattoo since like the 60s. Yeah, showing um, showing the person's age perhaps and also that it's just the ink. The ink was different. It was made out of different stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the Statue, Statue of Liberty, Liberty Green. Green. Here's the, here's the quick uh, write-up for The Devil's Honey, though. In one of the most twisted 
twistedly intense films of his career, Lucio Fulci takes on the erotic thriller genre and unleashes an onslaught of glossy depra depravity, depravity in, in Ultra HD for the first time ever. Insane S&M saga, complete with torrid romance, rampant nudity, woodwind-induced orgasms, and a cavalcade of kink to deliver what the digital bits called one of the sleazier films Fulci ever made. Interesting. Hmm. Psychosexual sicky, also known hmm. as dangerous obsession. Huh. Also, uh, Kathy's Curse. Mm hmm. Get some cute, cool eyes on that one. Mm hmm. Uh, I'll just read what it says quick here. Utterly bizarre and kind of brilliant. Operating on a plane of existence far removed from our own, it rewards. Repeated viewings once you've fallen under its crackpot spell. Hmm. The Great Alligator. What years are these things from? Um, Kathy's Curse is from the 70s. It's, it doesn't give me an actual date here. It says, just says the 70s. Hmm. Um, the Great Alligator. It's an Italian horror film. You think they would give you the date in here, but they do not. And also, <clears throat> what is this? Uh, Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker. I love the title. Yeah. Huh. I don't know the cover. Oh, that's sweet. I like that. They've got a lot of covers going on. Yeah, they, well, they got the slip. Front, the, the back, the yeah. side. My vote is the woman like, oh, that's, yeah, then, that's my vote. Yeah, This one's from 1981. The butcher bit. That one told me the date. That one's from 1981. Apparently, Mr. Reddy saw that one. Really? I saw that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, she's grabbing her throat. There's cars driving around. Anyway, thank you, Severn Films. We'll yeah, talk about these in cool. the future. In mm -hmm. the future. That's my sign for the future. So this weekend, Abigail is opening. Which is uh, yeah. the, uh, <laughs> the, the child uh, vampire film. Oh, that's right. Looks pretty cool. Yes, it does look pretty cool. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah. And I'm sure most people out there will at least are interested in seeing it. Mm -hmm. So that'll be sweet. We actually are gonna have some guests coming up soon from uh Boy Kills World, which we saw at Buff, which is that's pretty wild that we'll have some people on from that. Pretty big movie. <laughs> Coast. You gotta put Coast's comments up here so people know what the hell I'm talking about. Made me on too. What me? <laughs> it's just a long day. I've I been brutalized at my job lately. Not in a fun way either. <laughs> Sasquatch Sunset also opens <laughs> this weekend. What is it? Sasquatch what? Sunset. Remember we saw the trailer at um Is this the one with the family? The family of Sasquatches? Yeah. Yeah. This is not my top creature. I would. I, I, I think about Gary it. and the Hendersons really soured me. Sophia, Sophia like, Castiola, in a uh, she won't mind if I say it. Sophia in a private message said she can't think of a movie she's less interested in than <laughs> Sasquatch. <laughs> <instead>. <laughs> yeah, it's not right. Coast, it's they're like. There is Bigfoot porn in it. Bow, bow, wow, yeah, bow. there's definitely they're getting it on in that movie. It's it's very obvious. You guys are just selling it more and more to me. <laughs> Better than you talking about your freaking dick whacking machine earlier. Yeah, when Naomi fun. was on. No, like, dude, it's, a, it's, just, a mich it's a game where you get like a mallet and you got. That's not how that was interpreted. By that's how she people. said it. No. 
No. Good time. Whack. Come on, man. You know what whack is? Yeah, but it, she even said it was a whack-a-mole game, but with with uh, schlongs. I don't hear that word very often. I, I like to bring back words that are not. Yeah, known. that was like straight out of junior high. <laughs> Early junior high. I don't like. I don't like to work Ask blue. What? Ask, Ask what? what? That's a movie. Oh my god. That's I need a, to remember that and draw. Yes. I think I need to make Nep something. Nepkinimation. <laughs> this yeah. is something that's different about having a video show is that I used to be you able to draw and yeah. not feel rude. Like if I'm drawing, that doesn't mean I'm not listening. Right, right. But maybe I so should just draw. I'll just draw a ask watch. I got almost 10, 20 minutes. Yeah, 18 minutes. Ask watch. Ask watch. I'm doing it. This is After. great. Maybe shirts are coming up. The ask watch. The ask watch. I'm all about it. Oh Hell yeah. So we can keep talking about things while I'm doing my Yeah, own. we're not to sit here in silence while she's drawing ask watch. <laughs> it could be a whole line of uh of cryptids. We got the ask watch. What else have we got? We got spider spider prawn. Spider Mothman. prawn. I don't know if anybody followed up on that. It is out there. Right, right. Oh my goodness. Mothman it's seems so to be weird. really like uh great gaining in popularity lately. Yeah. Yeah, it's I bought a moth brought it up. Yeah, I bought a Mothman hat. Really? Yeah. Recently? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just took a picture of it uh, yesterday, I think. Really? I saw I found a Mothman beanie and I was like, I think I need to buy that. Who doesn't love Mothman? Well, he's not. I don't I need to know more about these. Yeah, I don't really know anything yeah. about him. Just besides using Neil just moth. trying to be cool. Get on the Mothman train. All <laughs> aboard. Choo choo. The cryptid train. All aboard. Is Asquatch. <laughs> Mothman? No, I don't know what's going on. Here we go. Here's the Mothman hat. It's a beanie. I'm it's excited. pretty cool. Goth it's, moth. It's, it's it's all it's got all over uh -huh. though. It's like all over design. It looks like pajama bottom. <laughs> it it's, sounds it's but all, comfortable, right? It looks yeah, it yeah, and it's much lighter than my usual ones. So yeah. I think it'll be nice. Your, for, spring, uh, your spring, your spring and fall. And Mothman looks cute on it. See, he's like a little flying Mothman up here with red eyes. Yeah. It's all over it's design. It's actually pretty scary, isn't it? Yeah, but, like, but this is... Nessie cute. isn't actually scary. I think Loch Ness Monster is just kind of out there swimming. He just swim Yeah, I don't think Loch Ness eats people or anything. He's just floating around. Floating there. Yeah, just doing his... Eating algae. It's Nessie, so is it like a girl? Or a That's female, true. a feminine, not necessarily a girl, but like a feminine, right? Monster, mm -hmm. could be uh, a gothic mothman, a goth moth. Goth. There's a ch what's champy? Champy sounds familiar, but I'm I don't not know familiar with that one. I'm gonna my, look up champy. I think my uh, Bigfoot is too short. I gotta raise its ass a little bit here champy i put looked up champy I'm, I'm getting flowers you're getting flowers yeah oh here we go mighty monsters wiki champy hmm. champy is a fire type monster i think this is for some game though. oh we got the Dump answer that. right here in the uh in the chat the lake champlain monster i've never heard of that one Uh, skunk ape. I believe that was like another term for Sasquatch. I believe skunk ape, because like supposedly they smell like variety? skunks. It's not its own variety. I remember uh, back in the day when we had cryptozoologist on the show, he brought yeah. up skunk apes. I don't remember exactly. Who uh, sadly passed away not that long ago. It's been a bit, hasn't it? It's been a few. Yeah, years. I think it was during the pandemic. So. Oh, he was a good guy though. We had him a couple times. Scott Marlowe. Scott Marlowe, yeah. One of my favorite uh comic book pictures Troy drew was uh, Scott Marlowe. 
Yeah. Got a great big Bigfoot. Let me see if I if it's on here anyway. Anywhere. But uh, I liked how he uh, the fingers on on it was really cool. The fingers. Yeah, it's the fingers of a uh, Bigfoot. Fingers of Bigfoot. That's an album name. Yeah. The fingers. It's a band name, really. I should. I should do a, a better. Uh, this back back at this time, I didn't know how to do shading or anything. Um, so it's not shaded, but still cool looking. See me making the faces. Uh, <laughs> I I saw that. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that cool? Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. I like him just looking up. I like everything about it. It's really good. But I love the big fingers. Mm hmm. That's a good one. Very awesome. Yes. Rods are bugs from space. Man, you know it all, Coast. Man, we got a coast. Are you all about doing a uh calling in sometime for a cryptos a crypto show? We'll have to work out what we're gonna talk about. What was the show I was talking about? I don't know. Oh, it was about um I think it was about it's just the supernatural because Joe Castro was on. Yeah, that'd really, be good. It was really cool. I I loved it. He's clearly, clearly is feels very strongly. And well, not even feel, he's like got strong belief. Mm -hmm. Uh Coach said he would love to do that. Sweet. Whoa. That'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm all about the undiscovered. Look at that, see undiscovered creatures mm -hmm. and our boy johnny cakes john reddy is also in pretty great All right. bugs from space bugs from bugs space. From i don't need space. that yeah bugs are gross yeah no no bugs this <laughs> is a, a hand-sewn nasty neo beanie where that oh That's sewn right. by yourself yeah Well, you sewed the patch on. You didn't make the patch. No, I didn't make to be fair. Sewed on you. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty, pretty rocking though. It surely is. My head's very cold now without the sun. Yeah, it's not good. It's nice outside, but it's cold in my basement. It's cold in your brain. I'm insane. I got no brain. When I stayed in Silver Springs for a winter, something weird was walking on the roof. Damn. You sure it wasn't weren't Santa? No, uh, weren't no reindeer. Reindeer? 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 Is that a new one? It could be. I was something, uh, I was in my backyard once and something big, dark, and stinky flew right past my face. What was it? So that wouldn't be skunk ape because I don't think they fly. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? I don't know. I don't know all the details. Bigfoot looks wow. kind of just like a gorilla. Now I'm getting, uh, I'm getting, a. Uh, Facebook ads for something I've been worn for a long time. Mm -hmm. I don't think Annabelle wants me to bring this back. Uh, for tie dye uh, night shirts, you can wear night shirts on your own, but don't bring them to a freaking hotel no, and have no bottoms now. and just I a fucking too, night shirt. I get too cold now. Now I need all kinds Good. of stuff. Good. I'm actually wearing. I think uh, I like the room cold now more than I you. I know. Yeah, I actually sometimes I get up sleep night well and turn, up, turn up in the heat. I'm like, I'm it helps cool. me, especially if I'm gonna have like a big day because if if it's not kind of cool and my face gets like rat and it's not good. I'm wearing pajama bottoms right now on the show. Who isn't? Who who shows up to anything like this in pants, like legit pants? I'm wearing, I know you probably can't see, but I'm wearing my Friday Thirteenth hockey jersey. I just got. Oh. Cool. I don't have my markers right in front of me. I had a I had the shining shirt on earlier, and then Nathan said that was his favorite movie, and I was like, "Oh shit, I should have left that on." I guess you get some credit, some street cred for exactly. um, for liking the shining with the Juggalo crowd. 
I'm going to turn off my camera for a minute, but I'll still yeah. be able to hear you because I would want to get up and not show off my pajama bottoms. Oh, my Lord. All right. <laughs> they're not they're not good. They've been around. So I think I got to throw away my uh, my Yeti ones. Actually, they're pretty worn throw out. Away your what? My Yeti uh, pajama bottoms are getting too worn what? out. They just they're, just, up? they're getting too worn out. They're like hol getting holy now. Coast like an old sock soaked in old lavender. Old Jeez. lavender. That's a that's a very descriptive smell. Yeah. Very specific. Boots with fur could be. Boots. Dave Deadman. Immediately hey. Donald Duck in when I get home from work. It's part of my routine. Walk through the door. Goodbye, pants. <laughs> that could be like an opening to a sitcom. Like you walk in, you throw the pants. It's just part. Yeah, it's part of the thing. Back, I used to like it on Nick at Night when they used to make up their own lyrics to like classic sitcom uh, intros that didn't have lyrics. Really? Yes. Yeah, was that? Why was the Dick Van Dyke one? It was a. They made up lyrics to that? Yeah. Huh. What the hell? Dick Van Dyke do, 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 comes home, guy. hugs Lore, and accidentally stumbles huh. on the thing. I do Bounce. remember that. Sometimes he doesn't do it because he... Something with a little skip. <laughs> I forget how it goes, but it was, it was pretty awesome. And they had my three sons ones. Did they? Yeah. Nick at they're night. my three sons. They're my three sons. The Bob Newhart one was funny. It was just like Bob Newhart, Bob Newhart, Bob Newhart, Bob Newhart. <laughs> they just kept saying Bob Newhart over and over. Whoa, 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 whoa. Almost got my drawing torn. That would have been bad. I just got home from work, by the way. So that means he's pantsless. <laughs> Dave dead man. He turns on without your head. And that means pants around his ankles. <laughs> Who can blame Stop him? and trow. <laughs> Coast LPA drawing. Just drop. Oh, wow. He used trow, too. Just drop trow at the front door. Hell yeah. yeah. It's kind of, we were on the same mine wave there, Coast. Both our minds go right to Dave Deadman dropping trow around his ankles. I'm sure Dave is very excited about this. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. Mm -hmm. Without forget without your head, this is without your pants, is Jim Ready. <laughs> very true. All right. So uh soon we'll be seeing Ass Squatch, mm -hmm. which will be a good time. I don't really have much news here. Yeah. Talk about it, obviously. So that's why we're just having a good time now. There's no news. Well, we only got five minutes left anyway. Just five like, minutes. Yeah. Seven no limbs. I brought this up last week, but um Blue Mouse is uh remaking Blair Witch, which I don't have Whoa. a for. I'm not Ew. anti remake like some people. Now I agree that they remake too much stuff, but that's one that to me is like so much about the time it came out. Yeah. And like the the whole thing about the internet and is it real, isn't it? And it was before like we were, you know, uh found footage was like this thing was a new thing. But to do that now, like if you just do it as is, like I don't think it can really work. And if you do something completely different, then it's not really bear witch. Yeah. So I just think unless you really do something that one you've got to be real creative with. If you just put out like a new version of the same movie, I think it's a failure. But, yeah, I'm inclined to agree with you, sir. It's just, uh, I don't know. Good luck to them. If it's cool, then that's great. We just yeah. uh, don't expect that. No, and the one that some people were mad about, and I wasn't. So they're mad about that, and I kind of agree. And, you know, who knows? It could always surprise you. But the other one was. Um, the Running Man, and oh. that one I am totally cool with because I don't really consider that a remake so much as you would do a new version of, of mm -hmm. the novel. And the I actually really enjoy the Arnold Schwarzenegger Running Man, but it has absolute, almost absolutely nothing to do with the first. I mean, the 
it's as the novel. It's got like the basic, I guess, idea in a way, but just the tell everything about it. I honestly don't know the Running Man. Really? In, in either way. No oh, you should read the original Running Man's awesome. It's uh, one it? of the Bachman books. Oh, those are special. Yeah, it's very dark. Not feel good whatsoever. It's about a guy down on his luck. He enters uh, the Running Man, which is a game show on TV where uh, people are hunted live on television. Oh. And um, through like cities. And, you know, if, if you can escape, you get paid so much. And if not, you get murdered and stuff. And so um, we get killed you know, by the hunters live on television. They're like the sports heroes of the day. Oh, Jesus. And um, so it's super dark. I don't want to spoil anything because it, it's very dark. It also, when I I read it recently and I was like, oh my God, why they should make, this is one that instead of remaking stuff that I think already worked, like Pet Cemetery, mm -hmm. um, this is one that you should remake because. Because it deserves it. Yeah, because the Arnold Schwarzenegger one's a very fun movie, but it's like really nothing to do with the story so much. Um, but the very end, I almost think you have to change because the end's fantastic. Oh. But it is very, it's uh, too close to a real incident that happened many years later in America. Oh, I think you were sharing that with me. Yeah. Not long ago. And it sounds like you are correct, sir. I don't think that would fly at all. No, but um, the idea of doing that as a movie, I'm very excited about. And is there some kind of uh, timeline for that to happen? I don't think so. I think it's just being talked about at the moment. Mm -hmm. I just want to read this. Uh, jo Joshua Leonard, it's kind of long, but Joshua Leonard posted this after they had Bloomhouse announced the, the new um, Blair Witch. Joshua was one of the, the people from uh, the original movie. Yes. He says, uh, going pub public with this and would appreciate the amplification. So this is my face on a press release for a film being made by two major studios. Both I've worked for, both I respect. The weird part is that I didn't know anything about it until a friend sent me a congrats screenshot yesterday. My frustration is compounded because I've been trying to get Lionsgate to engage for a few for over a month about Blair Witch Project charity screening I'm putting together for Positive Fest to raise money for artists without health care. Oh, wow. No one will get back to me. Wow, that sucks. And yes, I've been thinking That's a lot about, about this time. After seeing my Blair Witch Project collaborators recently in sharing memories, sweet and fucked up ones. Fact, in 1999, Blair Witch Project's OG distributor claimed to have released the most profitable independent film ever, bought for $1 million and grossed over $250 million. While internally, they told us they were actually losing money from marketing expenses, so we might wind up owing them money. What? Wow. That's gross. Fact, because we used our real names in the first film, the studio claimed copyright. We had to take them to federal court to win our names back. That's bullshit. Wow. Well, I'm glad that he posted this because the fuck them. Fact. This... Go on, sir. Go ahead. Uh, fact, a Hollywood insider told the press that we, the actors, were paid $4 million as a buyout for our ownership points, while in re reality, we made $300,000. And never saw another dime. After buying a car and paying off student loans, Mike was back moving furniture within 12 months of the release while still on magazine covers. I hear that. Wow. There were many factors that made Blair Witch Project a success. Timing, marketing, etc., etc. But there was also the fact that us weirdos got together with virtually no resources and made a film that worked. Can we just go on record and say that the film itself is a huge part of why we're still talking about it 25 years later? I'm so proud of our little punk rock movie, and I love the fact the fans who keep the flames burning. But at this point, it's 25 years of disrespect from folks who've pocketed 
the lion's share, pun intended, of the profits from our work, and that feels both icky and classless. Because it is. Mm -hmm. And where did he have this posted? Posted on Facebook. I shared it in the in the Without Your Head group, which he replied a uh, uh, fire symbol. So he's happy. Maybe we should have him on. Yeah, I, uh, I asked him. So uh, yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. But that I mean, it made two hundred fifty million. The big at the time it was the most successful independent film ever. And then they try to tell them like it lost money. It's just... Fucking. And they could pay, could have paid them like they said they offer. So they go out and publicly and say they made millions on it. Um, they still would have made like two hundred million dollars even if they did pay these guys a couple million dollars. You know what I mean? Corporate bullshit. I do know exactly what you mean. So greedy. It's gross. But in good news, I've got the sweet drawing that unfortunately has a little mark on it. I hate that. But are you ready for the Asquatch? I am Asquatch. Uh, oh, let me put you on solo. Oh, sweet. Solo Asquatch. Here we go. Hell yeah, boo! <laughs> Baby's got back. <laughs> that rules. That's a great job, especially in like 20 minutes. That was awesome. That's awesome. Thanks. Very good. I love it. We're going to do that again for y'all. Boom. Yeah, look at Shake wow. it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, make it rain wow. up wow. in here. Wow. Yeah. Boom. Oh. There's, there's pictures of people putting coins in Mothman's wow. wow. statue. But, man, you got to bring the dollars for, uh, for Asquatch. Asquatch. Boom. Yeah. I think that yeah. should go on a T-shirt. It is pretty great. As long as I get paid for it, <laughs> yeah. I'm putting I mean, my own thing, man. Lexar could get the money for this shit. Yeah, like and stuff. What a crock! One thing that made oh, he's, that was about uh Blair Witch. You thought that ass squatch was going to be a crock? Come on now. No, it's about uh. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, I don't know. Then to think like the people in the remake, well, they'll be making more money than the people in the original movie that made million mm -hmm. uh, that made hundreds hundreds of millions. <sighs> and profit wise, you know, made like two hundred times more than what it costs, which is insane. Gross. This goes back to Joe Castro anti distributors. Mm. Mm -mm. Right. So, leaving it on the positive note, rather than the fucking corporate scumbags. Asquatch! The legend lives! Ready to do this. Bow, 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 bow. 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 Fast watch got big feet. You know what that means? Big ass cheeks. This has got some buns on that guy or girl. I don't know. That quatch is full of bottom. Hell yeah. I need to go. So next Morning week here on the show, Big Ed Gwynn from the Texas That's Chainsaw Massacre. Awesome. That's awesome. And Rebecca Mishral, maker of sweet meats. Oh, uh, which uh, gets the nasty deal award for favorite thing at, at Buff that year. I was freaking, I loved it. Um, she was really, she's really excited. Her first thing she made. So this yeah. will be very fun. We'll have a, a legend, an icon, and we'll have an upcoming creator mm -hmm. and a Lumia Dark with uh, music of the month. Shiny ass coast. Shiny happy asses holding hands doesn't make sense, but we'll figure it out. I it's got the shine and very air. powerful oh. ass. They're like well, I'm an ass man. Night. Boom, boom. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So until next time, that was Terrible Troy. This is Nasty Neil. And I am Annabelle Lecter. And this is without your head. Ha, 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 ha,